It is the 16th of April, 2024. My name is Simbalaja Charles Kiyago, just in time for the morning drift. We'll be with you all the way to a couple of minutes to 10 this morning as we look at the big issues that are trending across the country this morning. All the way from the medics strike that is looking to enter. It is a first month this week all the way into areas along politics, about the education sector, and as well, issues to deal with how the government is turning around the economy. The hashtag is the morning drift. We are live across our social media platforms at Lookup TV across all of them. we we'll start this morning with um, the SRC announcing that they're gonna or they're not going to increase salaries for civil servants in the country. Also at a time when they're tightening the loopholes around ghost workers and double payments, they want a single payment portal for all public service workers. We'll be telling you that also this morning, plus issues to deal with how rains have been causing havoc across the country. We come back with the newspaper review. Well, let's start with uh, the Daily Nation. This is um, what it's talking about, why a totally is under siege. Um, talking about the guy who's been a cornered, combative, there's just a lot of issues around um, employ employees' affairs or workers' affairs across the country uh, at a time when he's also been told to make his stand clear, what they say. It's political stand, that is. The story has been covered on page four and five. At a time when there's a bill that is getting drafted to end, to end or which is likely to end his long political career. We're going to read that story on pages four and five this morning. Wage bill crisis push for single uh, payroll. The story has been covered on the back page. And um, stories on the unrelenting rainfall have been covered on page 10. Hopefully this morning it's not raining in your area. And if it is, then take the proper safety precautions. This is the major news this morning on uh, this particular newspaper. Uh, on the back page, you're going to read by how money sent by Kenyans are, um, abroad up by 90% in the first quarter of the year. And uh, this story about agencies pushing for single payroll for public workers has also been covered on the... Um, back page. Good. Also, sport-wise is that Shabana FC um, gained more ground in the fight against relegation from FKF Premier League with victory over Mohoroni Youth in Kisumu. The story has also been covered in page 38. Let's cross over to the standard. Um, it's talking about United by Fear Factor, Deputy President Brigadier Gashagwa and National Assembly Speaker Moses Petangula held a meeting to discuss government agenda at a time the two leaders are under political pressure. Story has been covered on page six. Big sex trade in um, massage palace. Story has been covered on uh, page eight. Um, Medic's plan weekly protest. Story has been covered on page four. And uh, very ruling Boston Marathon. Um, was, she wins the 128th Boston Marathon marathon yesterday, while the uh, compatriots uh, Sharon Lockheedy and Edna Kiplager took second and third positions respectively that's it on the back page you're going to read a story about how arsenal and liverpool have been left in pain as momentum shifts in man city's favor it's not momentum per se it's just um the league position changing because now man city is number one arsenal were number one some time back liverpool were number one some time back as well so it's just uh, positions changing We'd expect more drama at the top of the table and that will continue essentially into the final weeks of the um, Premier League. That's why it's the best competition in the world, especially this season. Not clear who's going to win it. Now, everybody keeps on saying Man City's going to win it, but this season 
if there's anything to go by, nobody knows. Good. Just before we step out of it then, um, let's take a look at um, the last uh, paper that we have for you this morning. The Business Daily is talking about big farms buying Kenya's carbon credits revealed. I want to read all of that. NLC 20 share index and the NLC all share index essentially and they're done on negative yesterday at 0.87% and 0.005% for both respectively. That's it uh, on your newspaper review this morning. We take a tiny breather. Once we come back, I'll be taking you straight to our newsroom where we get to see what it is that you're waking up to this morning. Half ignorance in the country maintained that the doctor strike, which has been, which has now entered its second month, is still on. This was uh, despite a warning from the Inspector General of Police that the strike was illegal. Health unions led by Camp PDU and um, KUKO now say they will not be intimidated, maintaining that their plan to demonstrate will go on. And as uh, Ebi Kandenyi now files, Camp PDU Secretary General Dabji Tala on Monday said they would return to the streets on Tuesday and maintain that they had notified police about it. Doctors in Eldoret were up in arms fighting for what they believe is their right. The strike is on evident by these doctors who marched with placards in their hands while singing songs of solidarity. This coming a day after IG Kome directed that the strike be stopped terming it illegal. The doctors who are accompanied by police officers maintain they have the right to protest. Mambo ya wage bill, hiyo ni narration ya kwamba sisi tukatae ile CBA rates zetu zenye already tunajua what we are supposed to earn as doctors in this country. Mbona other professionals ambao wako na CBAs hawajapunguziwa mishahara. Sahi we are seeing employment in the police department, teachers department, other government entities, CAS, na wanapewa the correct rates. Lakini kifika ni madaktari, oh, wage bill, oh, sijui serikali, oh, we'll live within our means. Hiyo ni porojo, na sisi ya tuwezi kubali. Kwa sababu tunajua what doctors have been earning since 2011, even before the CBA. In Nairobi, health unions led by KMPDU Secretary General Dajia Teller revealed that the strike will go on every Tuesday. Speaking to the press, Dajia said, that there have been no complaints that have been filed against the strike as he called out IG Kome for threatening them and planning to send police officers to disrupt their strike. PDU and other civil uh, societies, we've already proceeded to court against the defamatory action and statement that was released yesterday. So I think uh, as a union and as uh, the civil societies will serve uh, the AG onto that because the IG on that because he can't contravene the constitution. Everybody, every Kenyan is below the constitution and we are all up to comply. Moreover, he further added that the government is the one that is on strike for they have refused to sit down with them and reach an agreement of the way forward. He knows that this is a collective bargaining agreement that if it is to be varied, there has to be a meeting, there has to be discussions. It's not a unilateral decision to be done. And therefore, they can't keep on saying that we are ready for engagement on the media, or on the funerals, or in political rallies. When you're not seeing any letter of that matter, the same thing, the, the, the CS Labour cannot suspend or call off strike for doctors or for any other union. They are laid down labour regulations that a strike will be suspended or called off by the Secretary General of the particular unions. So our strikes are on. As the doctor's strike is set to resume tomorrow, KMPDU Secretary General Dajia Teller has said that no doctor is allowed to go back to work until the government heeds to their needs. Ebi Kadenyi, Look Up TV, Nairobi. Kisi County Governor Simba Raiti has called for investigations into an alleged plot by the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, Kisi County, to arrest him and his 14 supporters. Raiti, who recorded a statement at the DCI headquarters in Abubi in the company of his lawyers, Governor James Orengo, and a senior councillor, Tienda Molo, said the plot involved searching his homes in Kisi and Abubi counties over alleged illegal possession of arms. Stanley Lugaria reports. 
After hours of grilling, the KC boss who was out of the DCI offices flanked with his legal team led by CIA Governor James Orengo, Ariedas Otiende Amolo and lawyer Ndeguanjiru, who now want investigations into the matter expeditiously conducted, alluding that their client's life was in danger following a series of attack and disruptions caused by people allegedly affiliated with the government, forcing him not to be able to deliver on his mandate effectively as per the constitution. It is a scheme to bring false charges, fabricated charges, and thirdly, to make up a case we believe from the against Simbarati and uh, in the, in that we scheme, believe from the evidence we have seen so far governor that even in, the, in that in scheme, danger. Governor Rati's life is in danger. A video posted online showed the attendees injured in the resulting stampede of the meeting as they scampered for safety after their gunshots which ended their governor's event and ceremoniously in Nyakambene ward in South Mugerango where armed men stormed the meeting with gunshots in their air leaving four people nursing serious gunshot wounds including the governor's security detail. Simba Arati, our governor, has been operating in Kisi under very difficult circumstances that there is and we believe harassment we believe intimidation that there is constant harassment meted against intimidation governor and persecution meted against governor rati the two leaders have been at loggerhead as the supremacy battle takes new heights. The fights defining their relationship and dividing the larger Kisi region. Each time casualties are reported with one time the two going head to head with one another. Has a complaint. This is a unique with complaint. The DCI against we, the DCI. Governor Arati so has lodged a complaint with the DCI against the DCI. Uh, the so we want to see the action that they take. But as because uh, the alternative Arati, is to take the law into our own hands. The but as counsel for Governor Arati, we have lodged the complaint. They have assured us there will be some action, so we went to await that action. Detectives commenced investigations into the shooting incident in the county where several people were injured as confirmed by the county commissioner Tom and Jerry as area leaders urged relevant authorities to take legal action against Osoro who soon after distanced himself from the incident saying he was within the area to disperse bursaries and launch roads when he learned of the brawl in the governor's event calling for political tolerance accusing governor Arati's supporters of allegedly attacking his supporters and destroying their equipment what then we are saying is that he is no longer able to execute his functions as a governor domiciled in Kisi because that is where the threat is so these threats are affecting the ability of the governor to execute his functions Stanley Lugaria Look up, TV, Nairobi. Police in Akuru are holding 16 young men, including minors, suspected to be part of a criminal gang that has been terrorizing residents of Rwanda and its environment. County Police Commander Samuel Andani also confirmed that the police were in pursuit of a woman said to be harboring the young men. Ndanyi noted that two um, pistols, 33 rolls of bang, and an improvised rolling flag that is used to roll bang were recovered during the raid. With residents of Rwanda in Nakuru County lamenting over constant attacks by a gang of youths, their cries were responded to by law enforcers following the arrest of 16 youths belonging to a gang that has been terrorizing residents in a sting operation by police officers. Mchana tumeweza kupata taarifa kutoka kwa wananchi e, kuwa kuna mama moja e, sehemu inajulikana kama Ronda huyu mama wananchi na wale wakazi waka, wa pale wanamshuku kuwa e, ana, ni kama kufuga ako na kikundi cha vijana wengi sana na hawa vijana ni wanashukiwa kwa kuwa wahalifu confirming the operation Nakuru County Police Commander Samuel Ndanyi noted that the gang consists of young boys, some being school-going children, with several weapons nabbed including rolls of bang. 
tutafungulia mashtaka na vile unavyouliza kwa wengi wengine ni underage iko wala ambao kwa miaka 14 15 17 na wengine pia ni wako umri zaidi ya 18 tuko na watu wa miaka 20 21 so ni mchanganyiko iko underage lakini ni, ni vijana hatari ni suku yeah, ni a, 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 umri mdogo lakini vitendo ni kali vitu ambavyo tumeweza kupata nao hawa vijana ni toy pistols mbili uh, visu visu za jikoni eh, ambao ni visu vikali sana very sharp knives vi inne, visu inne tumeweza kupata pia somali sword moja tumeweza kupata bangi eh, grams 300 tumeweza kupata pia msokoto wa bangi eh, msokoto 33 the main suspect a middle aged woman said to be taking care of the gang is still on the run and is being pursued by police officers Iko mama moja kwa jina Salome Nafuna. Huyu ni mama ambao katika katika rada yetu tunamtafuta na mali yuko akijisalimisha and tutaweza kujua um, um, the way forward. Lakini ni mama ambao um, tumepata taarifa ambao jamii ina ina imemkata ni mama ambao anafanya maovu katika jamii na sisi kama bidara um, usalama tunasema ni afadhali jisalimishe kwa polisi. INK Tani Look up TV. In a Tana Delta, a once tranquil landscape has been transformed into a scene of devastation. Torrential floods have submerged several villages, leaving farmers, businessmen, and residents grappling with immense losses. The flat waters have not only cut off communication channels, but are also trapped more than a 10 cargo trucks carrying fresh farm produce. Exploiting the crisis, some businessmen have seized the opportunity to purchase farm produce at a fraction of its actual value, offering as little as 10 shillings instead of the usual 25 shillings. Lano Mbuya reports. In Tana Delta, <laughs> large submerged villages trapping cargo trucks loaded with farm produce. <laughs> With no access roads, farmers face massive losses. Bonia Corner recounts devastation, estimating losses at 500,000 Kenyan shillings. We are almost 527,000. Lakini ni kiangalia sahi ili mambo ni kolao atana na India sana kuko sana. Kama hosa sa wenye magari gari kumi na mbili zote zimekuwa marundi. Watatoka vipi na watasaidika vipi na wawo pengine ni watu wamechukua loans. Na hawa kulima ambao wamelima na mali meharibika. Watasaidika vipi ili kuregesha ili garama. Kama mutu amegangana na ni mkulima amelima 13 acres. Businesses suffer as lorries remain stuck, blocking access to vital markets. Ibrahim Muhammad and Ibrahim Kumoro lament the losses of green drums and watermelons. Meatirika na maji, shamba eka sita, kwa mailon, eka moja, ya batanas, eka moja, ya pojo. Business people are stranded with invested produce, calling on government intervention to move the stall trucks. Evacuation now looms for 11 villages has water level rise. Tumeteseka tagia jumatatu mpaka wa leo wiki meisha na hatuna matumaini. Kule dani kuna gari saidi ya kumi. Simesima mauko na kuna matumaini ya kutoka jumaji imekuja ime imekuwa muto. Sasa tunaoba serikali saidia wala wako kule ngabo. Agarao tu wafungisiwa iso gari ya sao juu serikali kona ngufu. Hassan Galgalo appeals to authorities for temporary bridges to aid produce movement as the community awaits relief from Kenya Defense Forces, National Youth Service and Kenya Red Cross. The Tana Delta is facing a crisis as floods disrupt lives and livelihoods. So to number serikali, wasaidia na hali ya darura ili hima zao sa hizi itoke yende kwa sokoni. Tunaomba NYS, tunaomba Jeshi, tunaomba KWS. Tunaomba eh, Red Cross Waje wasaidia wakulima hii mali ifike sokoni At least kila mtu waregeshe ile garama aliongea Indekua itakuwa ni bora na itakuwa, watakuwa na morali ya kulima next time Kwa sababu huku tunafanya mazao twice aya ya watermelon Lona Lorraine Omboya, The Spotlight Education Captain Secretary Ezekiel Machogu now says that the government is making necessary preparations in readiness for grade 9 students will be domiciled in primary schools next year, speaking at Kangaroo Girls during the 62nd National Drama and Film Festival 
Machogo says his ministry plans to build 15,000 classrooms to accommodate the grade 9 students. The CA has also revealed that 20,000 junior secondary teachers will be recruited to make up for the shortage of JSS teachers. The structure uh, uh, of our education system was discussed in our sessional paper presented before Parliament uh, in 2019. Uh, commonly known as session of paper number one on education. It did provide for the structure. This particular year we are at level eight. Next year we will be at level nine and the level nine in which we will be next year 2025 will be domiciled in our existing uh, primary schools. And that's why they are making the necessary preparations to ensure that when we come to that particular time or next year we will be ready as far as infrastructural development is concerned and even teacher preparedness. The government has given 3.39 billion uh, 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 to our members of parliament, the 309, uh, 290 constituencies, uh, and they will be able to match that. So we will be able to do a total of uh, 15,000 classrooms. We are in the process of returning our teachers and not only that, but also employing uh, more additional teachers. Uh, 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 we are employing 20,000 more this year, such so that by next year we should be ready. Jubilee parliamentary neck members on Monday appeared in court after being summoned by Justice Muita in a case involving the parties and leadership. Speaking after the case, uh, which was virtual, the group that prides itself in having 28 members in the House maintains it's a parliamentary party and that it is out of the Azmir coalition. Majid Hussain with the details. The push and pull in the Jubilee party continues to take new heights as the Dove party faces wrangles within itself as two groups fight for its soul. Speaking after appearing before Justice Chachamuita on a hearing on the legality of the party's neck operations, the Sabina-led faction maintained that they are not in Azimio coalition. First one to a summon by the court, court number one by Justice Chacha, Chachamuita. We complied. Unfortunately, the issue, the issue was had virtually and it ended. And uh, just to tell you, that uh, you can see the entire neck actually out of 22 the majority are here the leadership are here and jubilee continues but just to add that jubilee has left azimio long time ago and i think whoever is still pushing to push us back to azimio is going to hit a uh, dead end the leadership of the party also says Sabina Chege is the party leader and continues to be the minority whip despite calls to have her removed. Uh, the, our, our party leader, acting party leader remains the Honorable Sabina Chege and she is also doubles as a, a parliamentary whip because for information Jubilee has 28 members of parliament and an assembly, national assembly and five senators in the Senate and one member in Yala total into 34 members of parliament. So we are a parliamentary party. And the case here revolves around uh, challenging the speaker's decision to dis declare Jubilee a parliamentary party. So the wrongles within the Jubilee party have been going on since the 2022 election, leading to the party breaking into two, Akanini Kega and Sabina Chege led faction, and another faction led by Jeremiah Kioni. The soul of the Jubilee party is now in the corridors of justice. Jubilee is completely out of Azimio coalition in every aspect. Mm -hmm. Because even right now, Baba is oscillating. Very soon, even him will exit. So, what is the worry? Majid Hussein, Look Up TV. Well, we go for a tiny breather, but uh, once we come back, the question is not that complicated, isn't it? 
you know, that there's a lot that we have to talk about this morning. But um, issues that are about presidential term limits have been floated over and over again. Not far after the president came into power, uh, that, that, that was a conversation. The other day as well, one did Mas Baraza, he's saying, well, we, we should let the Kenya Kwanzaa government continue all the way into 25 years. It, it, it begs us to ask that particular question. This as also within the um, Kenya Kwanzaa government, there are conversations or meetings between one, Kashago and Moses Wetangula. Are they... Are they under pressure? If any pressure, which one is there? And have we seen them build up something towards 2027? Once we come back, we talk about that also. Went in on issues around the current doctor strike in the country. You can get involved at Luca TV across all your social media platforms. The hashtag is the morning draft. Good morning. University of Kenya, which was chartered on the 3rd of August 2023, aims to revolutionize higher education by breaking down barriers such as cost, previous exam grades, and geographical location through online open learning at the comfort of your home, job, etc., thus ensuring accessibility to education for all members of the society. In a nutshell, Open University of Kenya leverages technology to deliver education. Open University has has brought a new dawn in the Kenya education system where learners are able to access education in a flexible, affordable, and all-inclusive. Intakes ongoing for May and September. For more information, call us on 0202-000211 or 0202-000212 or email us at info at ouk.ac.ke. Open University of Kenya, an innovative university for inclusive prosperity. Save a Life is a non-profit organization that has taken the front line in transforming lives in the entire country. So far, we have transformed life of over 100,000 people through our programs, which include medical support, youth empowerment, street family program, feeding program, and climate change. Join us today as we transform lives. As we always say, service to humanity is service to God. Save a life, transforming lives. Are you an SME looking for a media partner? Look no more as Lookup TV got you covered for all your visibility and marketing needs. We at Lookup TV understand your business needs and want to work with you on your marketing journey, giving you solutions that will take you to the next level. Call us today on 0707-572-358 or send an email to sales at lookuptv.co.ke and kickstart this amazing journey. Welcome to Lookup TV, your official SME media partner. zungumzia swala la uh, huduma ya afya na kazi na kupata pesa gani inachukua nafasi ya kwanza people are there to serve but where, wherever there is service 
Actually, there must be a uh, motivation. Wametilia manani hela. Ovich pia simba ya? Ikiwa ni pesa inaanza ama ni huduma inaanza mwenyeji atasema hili na aseme lile angalau sauti yake ipate kusikika huduma ikuze kwanza kwa sababu hawa madaktari walitwa na Mungu au wewe kwenda hospitali useme unalipa kwanza ndio hudumiwe hudumiwe kwanza ndio ulipe service bado itakam number one ni priority but pia kuko na ile moral au watu wanakuwa pewe moral yeah bila shaka ni swala ambalo linaathiri wewe mwananchi wa kawaida na mimi binafsi As the night falls, we come to life to bring you a comprehensive broadcast from the numerous events happening across our 47 counties. When it breaks, it matters, and each story is important. If it's Thursday, join me, Nancy Nelima, and my able panelists as we break down the low jargons and analyze the Constitution in a way only you, only you can understand. The news cycle never stops, neither does time. We cover each and every sector and present to you factual and accurate occurrences. This, this is where facts win the day. Join me. Join me, Nancy Lima. Ian Keitani. Tuesday, every Wednesday. Thursday. As from 9, from 9 p.m. on the Insight. Only on Look Up TV. Let me welcome to you the director of District 114 East Africa Toastmasters International. His name Japheth Musau. Toastmasters International started in 1924. The tagline of Toastmasters is where leaders are made. Yes, and everything we do at Toastmasters is centered around helping people become better communicators yes. and better leaders. better leaders. Within Toastmasters, now you learn how to run a large organization. Multi-countries, multi-languages, multi-cultures. So as a speaker, you have to be aware who you're talking to, what is the level of knowledge with the topic that you're going to give them, and is that topic relevant to them. You could stand up, have a message which is not relevant to your audience, or give it at a level which is either too far above or too far below, you have to find that sweet spot. We have feedback in Toastmasters, and there's what is known as a sandwich method. You start with the positive, you give your suggestion in the middle, and you end in a high note, a, encouraging note, we say. A, it's like a, a sandwich. Yeah. Start your day with a workout routine, an exciting moment of exercise that is simple but powerful for your ultimate fitness. Build your strength, shape and body muscles with lunges, push-ups, squats, burpees, planks, dumbbells and more. Let's work out every Monday to Saturday from 6.30am on Fitness Zone, a one surefire way to attack your fitness regimen effectively. Alright, alright. Welcome back to the Morning Drift. My name is Simba Elijah Charles Kiyage. Thank you very much for being part and parcel of um, our show this morning right here at Look Up TV. Uh, and the question that we ask this morning is, which way, Kenya? If you count the number of people or officials that have floated this conversation of presidential term limits, there are so many. Not just one, not two, not three, not four, several. And do you know what they say? There is no smoke without fire. For us then this morning, before we see that fire, if indeed there's going to be fire, 
Let's talk about that smoke. Because the smoke is this conversations that are all not testing the waters on what the reaction can be or will be when indeed the fire starts burning. Before then, I introduce the latest man to float this particular conversation. Let me introduce the gentleman who are with us this morning. We do have a William Seno who is um, essentially from Solomonic Movement. William, how are you doing, sir? Um, I'm fine, thank you. Happy to, have you, happy to have you around. Also yeah. this morning, we do have one Mr. Mungai. Eric, how are you doing? I'm well. Good morning oh, to never the viewers. I never saw you yesterday. I was, I was wondering. <laughs> Imagine. One day late is not too late. Yeah, imagine. Come on, Lifika. It's never too late. Eh? <laughs> Happy to have you around. Good. Let's talk about this conversation this morning. Then. It's, it's not one, Mr. Mungai. Not two. It's not three, not four. Several. Mm. Um, leaders who are affiliated to the Kenya Kwanzaa side of coming and saying, you know what? We should give President Ruto more, more time in office. I was saying that five years is not enough for you to deliver. Didmas Baraza is the latest one saying, you know, we should let Kenya Konza rule for 25 years, give them more time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we keep on talking about this. I mean, the president has already addressed it. He said, this is not an issue that I really want to get into. Our constitution is clear. You have a five year term. Once you are elected, you have five years to go in. Mm. After that, your term expires. Go back and seek re-election for the second term. After which, if you get it, you'll never get it again. Mm -hmm. So why do we keep on floating this conversation, Mr. Mugai? Thank you, Simba. And once again, good morning to our viewer it's uh, today at least it's it's lightened up it's not as cold and as rainy as it has been the last couple of days well i must say to your debate on extending presidential limits yes we we are a country that behaves like a warthog we are quick to react very quick to forget and we don't even mind looking ugly many of the times and why do I say we are quick to forget? You know, the debate on presidential limits is as old perhaps as the country itself. Yes. You know, it's only that at the inception of independence, when uh, Jomo Kenyatta took over in 1964, uh, precisely when we had Jamhuri, you, you know the only reason he did not rule for life was because he passed on unfortunately due to illness but who knows the kind of trajectory maybe as we speak today Jomo Kenyatta would have been the president of this country uh, you know in, in Guinea they have had only one president for the last I think 50 years that's the only man they have seen but of course we took a different trajectory because once, once Jomo passed on we had Moi for 24 years and that is where really the debate on presidential limits started yes. when we sought to repeal section 2a yes. of the former constitution so that then we put a cap on before the 1992 general elections we put a cap on you know presidential terms so it's it's a debate uh, that is as as old as then now when we got into the 2010 uh, constitution or dispensation there are people who are saying you know Kibaki was a good president, he should have ruled for life. Then, of course, Kibaki exited the scene. We had uh, Uhuru, and people were saying Uhuru at 61, they were calling him Kamwana. They <laughs> were saying Kamwana is <laughs> too young to retire. Where is Kamwana going, you know? He still has the energy to rule the country. And, of course, now we are in this dispensation that, of course, one, the the the, the, the main perpetrator of this discussion was one Cheryl Gay, yes. who proposed that the presidential limit should be increased from five years to seven years. He's the first person that came up with this discussion. And then the, the next person was Fafi MP. Uh, I think he's called Salah Yakub. 
Now, Salah Yaqub said, you know, this discussion, uh, let us scrap the presidential limits altogether. If a president is good, let's rule, let him rule for life, let him become a father figure to the nation. And UDA were very quick to respond. In fact, the, the Secretary General of UDA said that the Fafi MP has a very fertile <laughs> imagination, so to speak. But that has not stopped the debate from it, it being not. perpetuated. Yes. So now we had uh, Narendra Raval the other uh -huh. day, the mm -hmm. CEO of the chairman or CEO of Devki. Mm -hmm. And when they were in West Pokot, he almost became like JJ Kamodo singing praises to the president <laughs> until he said, you know, Mr. President, you can rule for 20 years now. <laughs> but you know, I have a word of advice for Narendra, by the way. He should go and have a cup of coffee with a gentleman called Rai, so that Rai can explain to him what it means to fall out with a state that you want to live for 20 years. Because you remember in this show we had a discussion last time no, when we were discussing about Rai Namambo yeah. ni Matatu. Getting kidnapped. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> and you know who Rai, who Rai is <laughs> when it comes to the state. Mm -hmm. So I think Narendra needs to, to actually borrow a leaf from, um, from Rai. And of course now Didmas Barasa has joined the choir. He's singing the loudest now in terms of the presidential limits. But of, of, of consolation, so to speak, is the fact that the president has refuted um, all, all those narratives. He said he's not interested. And you know, Simba, for a fact, before we come later and discuss you know, the constitutionality of the debate, mm -hmm. For a fact, the truth is, mostly by the time the president is in his second term, he's a tired man. You know, you look at Barack Obama, when he became president of the U.S., he had black hair. By the time he was leaving, he had gray hair everywhere, uh, by, uh, with context, of course. Look at, uh, <laughs> look at uh, Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe Biden, you know now, he's even forgetting Sometimes he does not even remember where the exit to the door is. Eh? <laughs> they are calling him Sleepy Joe. If you come to Kenya, by the time Uhuru was finished with his dispensation, you could tell the man was tired. You could tell the man now wanted to throw in the towel. Yes. And for him, as far as he was concerned, he was waiting to hand over. Of course, he did not hand over to the candidate that he wanted. But you could tell the man was really done for in terms of the seat. So what I would say is that the people that benefit the most from a president holding on to power is not necessarily the president. That would be family members, the cronies, the power brokers. Those are the people that love power because then they can exercise it without responsibility. Yes, sir. Well, um, before, before, before we go back and look at what the constitution says about presidential term limits in the country, uh, this, this guy called the Didmas Baraza. In fact, I'll, I'll read for you his statement. And this is what he said, and we cover this story on um, www.lookuptv.co.ke. This is what he said. The only thing that we want for continuity is that we would want the Kenya Kwanzaa government to rule at least for the next 50 years. All right? Then goes on to say, we can do so and achieve the purpose by not necessarily removing the cap on the term limit. Now I'll continue. We will make sure that once President Ruto has completed his 10-year constitutional term limit, then whoever will come will pick it up from the progress that William Ruto would have met at that time. It's not essentially talking about the president, essentially continuing for the next 50 years, it's not that the Kenya Konza government should rule for the next 50 years, and they, they have to make sure of that. Like, like can we rule That's for 100? That's it. Well, uh, the statement by Didmas Barasa is actually, uh, it's genius, uh, it's a very, very honest uh, statement, and uh, that's his opinion, mm -hmm. and uh, if I were in such the same position as him, I would actually share the same opinion because uh, who, who doesn't want to, to rule for such a long time, albeit uh, legally and within the conference of the constitution? Yes. Now, okay, but the problem actually comes with, with uh, other similar sentiments, uh, almost similar sentiments, but uh, on a, with a taking, a, taking a different uh, traje trajectory. Like this, uh, Devki Ona actually, he was 
pointing out that uh, it's uh, William Ruto who should lead uh, for such a long time, 25, 25 years. Actually, but uh, after leading for 25 years, I doubt if there's any African president who will want to throw away the towel after enjoying, you see, after feeling how sweet the how sweet power is. And uh, you know, one thing about autocracy is that uh, they are uh, actually these people. You wonder, is it the the trappings of power that uh, actually wants to force them to stay glued to to power, or is it that there comes a time when they are ah, they have some interests that they want to protect, yeah? Now, looking at uh, such a such a an elite, his name his name. It must be Raza. No, oh, this other mm. tycoon, uh, the, um, the Indian tycoon. Yeah, yeah. The, the Devki yes. uh, CEO. Yeah, the chairman. Yeah? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, he's an elite, and uh, there's so much expectations that we put uh, on people who have uh, such like people like him who have succeeded in uh, defeating poverty yes. and actually staying out of poverty for such a long time. And so we expect them to make very, very, very right decisions and to also try to uh, steer the population and uh, the people who follow them in the right direction. So it's very unfortunate for such a person with such a capacity to try to return us back to the, be, like trying to bring a tyranny back to Kenya. Yes. Yeah, of course, I, I know he was alive when uh, when Mohi was, was laid in, and he, he saw with his own eyes the effects of having an autocracy. And he's been alive in his lifetime. He has seen, uh, he has seen uh, other countries such as uh, Uganda. He has uh, seen the experiences that we've seen in countries such as uh, Zimbabwe with uh, a president who actually died, uh, who was determined to have his last breath while seated on the, on the throne. And uh, the, the issues and the problems that actually arose in uh, such a country, like uh, in Zimbabwe, by the time, by the time uh, Mugabe was, uh, was leaving office, yeah, um, the inflation actually was uh, something like uh, 66 million percent, the rate of inflation mm -hmm. in such a country. So actually, to put it and to agree with uh, one of my favorite professors, P. Professor P. L. O. Lumumba, is that a good dancer should know when to leave the stage. When you stay for too long, you spoil it. No, and now, this billionaire should know very well that if Ruto, if Ruto stays there for too long, he's eventually going to spoil it. And when he spoils it, it's not going to be bad for the common manaichi only, but also for him. No, uh, because of Actually, as a business person, to whom do you sell to when the population is, uh, is living in poverty? Yeah, to whom do you sell, sell to? So unless this billionaire is very, very comfortable being a king, because uh, you see, they say in a, in a city of the blind, uh, the one, that man, the one-eyed man, the one-eyed man is king. So unless uh, this uh, tycoon is comfortable being a king, such a king, in a city of the blind, eh, bad for him because he'll be a king, but uh, a miserable one in the scheme of things. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, but I'll be coming back to you on that, uh, William, because that's where the conversation now begins. Mr. Mungai, before we go in and look at the constitutionality of this particular issue, if you look at when Navar, uh, Raval, sorry, said it just last week. The, the way it was met was not the same way that Yakubu's sentiments were met. That all of a sudden now is a bit of a hush. When did Masbaraza is saying Kenya Kwanza should rule for 50 years? We've not seen a statement from either UDA or the Kenya Kwanza side. It's hushed tones. Have we gotten to that place where, Mr. Mungai, now we're testing now water and the water is not reacting so much is as if we are burning the oil off this water now. Are we normalizing this conversation? Are we, are we getting closer to a point where we're saying, maybe now we should, we should talk about it? Because if you look at the way that the, the party reacted to Yakubu's statements, just a couple of months after President uh, Dr. William Ruto assumed office, it's not the same way they're reacting now to this statement. Mm. One, I think the, the debate on presidential term limits 
and putting into context Didmas' views. Yes. You know, they, they, they are a bit different because what Didmas is alluding to mm -hmm. is what someone had said that, you know, can we rule for a hundred years? Yes. Okay? And can we ruling for a hundred years, so to speak, uh, I think might have been prophetic because the, you know, the leaders that we've had ever since you know, all of them were, were babies uh, of Kanu. So when Didmas Barasa then intimates that, you know, the Kenya Kwanza regime should rule for f the next 50 years, yes. I take it not necessarily as an extension of the presidential term, mm -hmm. but as an extension of the people that might emanate from the Jubilee, uh, from the Kenya Kwanza regime, which is a different context from someone like Gerald Gay or the Fafi MP saying let us extend the current presidential terms. But so to speak, when we speak about, when we talk about extending presidential limits, it's not even without context because globally many, you know, we, we have seen examples of how this has happened. And I'll give you an example. There is a study that has been done by a guy called Alexander. Uh, he's one of the scholars, okay? And that paper is called, con I think, Continuismo, something like that. Yes. And what the researchers went to find out is that, you know, how, how do presidents that extend their terms, in the bigger scheme of things, how do they end up? And what was found is that a majority of the so-called extenders, you know, you could extend your term based on constitutional lacunas, or, or you, you know, based on, uh, on just brevity, deciding to take power by force and deciding to continue with the term, it found out that most of them actually ended up in shame. And it found out that, you know, as much as some of them might have achieved their, their goals, a majority of them did not live with favor with the population and with the political environment as they would have wanted to be, including those that sought to have their puppets yes. take over from them. And an example is the former president uh, who is now passed, Angolan president, Dos Santos. You know, Dos Santos, if you're not aware, is the, is the person who mentored, uh, he's called Lorenzo or something mm -hmm. in Angola, so that he could take over power. And then once he takes over power, he could protect their business interests, as well as continue looting oil. And a book has been written called The Looting Machine, and it is based in Angola, based on Angola setting. But look what happened when Lorenzo took power. When he took power, the first people to be jailed were the Dos Santos family. Uh, the daughter right now is living at large and disappeared. I think they had jailed the son. And so even when people in power, because, you know, extending presidential limits does not necessarily mean you extending it for yourself. It could mean actually getting placeholders to stand in on your behalf like happened in Angola, which backfired. And so I think in all due honesty, even as we have a sober discussion as a country, we must ask ourselves, is 10 years enough to implement a manifesto? And the answer is yes, it is enough. Mm -hmm. Look at it this way. If you have a good president, he should have the capacity. Uh, but, um, and, and I'm sorry to cut you there, because we should look at it from the respect of five years. The Constitution only sees five years. It doesn't, it doesn't see ten. Is five years enough to implement a manifesto? No, I say, I say ten because, you know, constitutionally speaking, mm -hmm. Constitutionally speaking, yes. you are allowed to go five, and then another five, and, seek another five. and, yes. and then the, mm -hmm. the limit is actually on, on two terms, yes. okay? Yes. And that is Article 142 of okay. the Constitution allows you not to extend beyond two terms. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say 10. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, the UDA administration, which I support, I envisage now we have eight years that was, left. That was, that was the next question I was going to ask Yes, you. because and now we, so we, sure have we, <laughs> we have exhausted two. But also but, remember... But, but, what, but what, what about five? 
because no no even five because the constitution essentially sees ten but what it allows for is five first clear your first five then go seek the second mandate as well is five years enough to implement a manifesto no you see five years is enough for the kenyan population mm -hmm. to determine whether you're taking them in the right direction so that if they determine that you're taking them as a country in the right direction, mm -hmm. then voting you for an extra five is a vote of confidence on the manifesto that you're implementing. So five years, yes. you see you must have markers. Remember, what's the flip side? The flip side is having a regime that is meant to bring down the country, a dictatorial regime, and therefore is five years, you see, because the question would be, Either five years is enough to implement a manifesto or you get bad leadership and then you ask yourself when will five years end so that we can change this government. As opposed to you have a limit of say president for life who then ends up becoming a dictator like we had in the former President Moy's regime yes. and then you have no redress. So when you look at it because sometimes when we look at and have a debate on extending presidential limits, sometimes we are focused on what's good. But the reality is, at one time or another, there are people who are going to fall a fall of the regime. And the regime might turn to its, its own children. Therefore, the question becomes, if it's president for life or for 10 years, as a country, are we willing to suffer for 10 years waiting for someone to exit? Or are we better off with, say, let's see five years, Yes. And you see, there is, there is also room constitutionally to impeach a president who is not taking us in the right direction. So in my opinion, the constitution under Article 136 and 142 gives us enough safeguards yes, to ensure that once we get a president, we have a president who we can conduct checks and balances. We have a president who can rule and govern within the confines of his own time yes. and this being an administration that was spread into you know i must always remind kenyans sometimes seeking an extension of presidential limit even biblically is not wise yes there is a there is a man in the bible who was about to die and he asked god to remind him uh, to remember just one thing positive he had done and god remembered the things i think he was hezekiah or someone like that eh? but do you know when his term when his life was extended he ended up dying miserably in fact he was better off were he to die at that particular point than having extended his term and i speak to the biblical illustration because you know this is a regime where we were prayed into and therefore, the legislatures calling for an extension of the presidential limits might understand biblical concepts more than perhaps uh, political statements. <laughs> William, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll take you back again uh, on, that, on that front as well. I mean, Eric is shy of saying, well, five years is not enough to implement a manifesto. So let's, let's speak for a man who essentially has said it before. This is a Deputy President Brigadi Gashagwa, and we quoted him on um, December 2023. That was last year. And this is what he said, uh, and I would uh, quote him, um, that speaking during a chat service in Manyata, Embu County, on Sunday, December 10th, the country's second in command said five years are not enough to turn around the country's ailing economy. Then he goes on to say, uh, the leadership needs 10 years to fully implement their manifesto. That's it. So indeed, this is a president, the deputy president right here, saying that in the better outlook of things, five years is not enough for you to implement your manifesto, that you need 10 years to fully say that we have worked. Do you share the same sentiment because under this conversation, William, there are guys who've said, maybe extend it to seven, one time limit of seven years and, and let the president step out. Well, I'm not surprised, uh, Mr. Simba. And I'm not surprised by the sentiments uh, that have been shared by my friend here. <laughs> Actually, the, and the same sentiments that have been shared by, by the likes of Gashagua, this UDA government. These are people who got into leadership by lying to Kenyans and they hope to continue 
uh, staying in leadership and even extending it by even lying to Kenyans. Because uh, looking at the manifesto, we're saying that five years is not enough for, <laughs> for one to, 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 to achieve whatever was in their manifesto is, is a lie. Uh, because when they were campaigning, actually they, they had uh, they had this list of uh, items that they were to achieve within 100 days. Now it's a... Uh, what hasn't been achieved? It's like 500 days or 600 days after that. You see, the cost of living. The it cost of living. Down. No, it has not, not gone down. What do you mean? Yeah, the price of hunger going down does not mean that the cost of living has gone down. Now why you are you see, changing I only, I, I only consume one packet of hunger within a week. So if uh, the hunger was 200, 200 bob and it's now 100 120, bob. is it? 120? It's 100. It's 100 bob. So, so you're basically telling yeah. me that some, I have some, some brands. Yeah, some brands. Some brands. Some So because of that hunger, <laughs> I've, I've now saved 100, 100, 100, 100, 100 shillings. Which but, is how much, pocket. but how much have I used on electricity? How much have I used on transport? You see? So is these people are liars. Uh, they are mis dis dis engineers, you see? Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised to hear them uh, turning around, uh, trying to now convince. They, they have seen actually that they cannot. They are clueless. They there's nothing they can do in, ten, in five years. And eventually, they'll, they'll start telling us there's uh, not much you can do in 10 years because of the, uh, the ills of the past mm -hmm. regime and the accumulation of Senate. the wrongdoings and the debts. Yes. Then eventually, mm -hmm. they'll tell us 15 years is better. Then eventually, 25 years. Then eventually, no, let's even make it 50 years. Senor, do you believe that you can fully implement your manifesto in five years? Well, if I cannot fulfill my manifesto in five years, then I have no business campaigning. And, and, and under that manifesto, because what am I telling the people? I'm telling the people that this is what I'm going to do yes. in five years. And basically, what is it? Uh, how difficult is it anyway? If you uh, if you know what you are doing, yes. The idea was to reduce the prices of things, uh, uh, basic commodities such as uh, unga, uh, rice, uh, sugar, uh, milk, and um, fuel. So what? Within 100, it's just a matter of uh, proclamations, yeah? Uh, it's said in that, uh, and even uh, le legislation, yeah? If things are, are that bad. And laying down frameworks that will see the prices of these things going down. The other thing that they were talking about is uh, affordable housing and uh, job opportunities for Mamamboga and uh, Boda Boda. I don't think you need five years for that. And they actually know that you, they do not need five years for that. So they are just trying to, actually, they, are, they, have, they, have test, they have had a test of power. They need more time. Five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, uh, probably forever. Uh, but, remember, a, yes. but remember, mm -hmm. we are two years in, into this government, OK? Yes. yes. Of which one and a half years was spent by people in opposition disrupting the government. To does get it, to get to get the job for one man. That doesn't doesn't to say get the job yes, for one man. That they disrupted the whole country's activity mm -hmm. for one and a half years to get one man a job. That must be put into context. That doesn't still mean that you are that you are not in government. Now imagine imagine we've wasted one and a half years out of five. As I'm not saying we should extend presidential yes, limits. Yes. But, I'm, but just saying, ideally, I'm just saying uh, yes. contextually, it, we have wasted one and a half years. That, that's courtesy. It. Yes. Courtesy of what he knows. But, but ideally, Mr. Mungai, do you believe that five years is enough to implement your strategy and, and turn around things? No, five years is enough. If you start conceiving at year one, yes. a five-year-old child is a very big child. What a change of art all of a sudden. Yes. Five years is all of a sudden, so all of a sudden <laughs> enough. No, you see, no, you must, you must understand. Just a moment ago, that, 10 years no, 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 yes. no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Please do not quote me out of context. I have been very categorical mm -hmm. that even though I belong to the UDA party, yes. I do not support calls for extension of presidential uh, leave, uh, for extension of presidential terms. Yes. Okay. What I have said on this, and it is on record, that the UDA administration or the Kenya Kwanza regime will yes. govern for 10 years, two of which we have already spent, one and a half which has been wasted by people from the mm -hmm. opposition. Yes. 
that's just to put it on record the the blanket let's 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 look but it's it's not even only um the likes of yakubu and 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 uh, raval who are talking about this Guess what? There's another man who's waiting on this particular issue. It is Gerard Gay. If you do remember yeah. the famous proposal during the NATCO sittings at the Bombers of Kenya, they never gave him they never gave him a hearing when complained heavily about it. And this is what he said, in fact, give him seven years. This is what he said. So then the first one year, there's nothing much that you can do. That's according to him. In the next five years, you can now start working and implementing um, your agenda and manifesto. And the last one here, he said, there's nothing that you can do as well because now there are political campaigns within the country as it normally happens in this country. Um, Mr. Wangai, the question is, does that make sense for him as well? Because it almost went into the NATCO report and had that been uh, a point of agenda, we could be talking about that right now, if it actually made it to the NATCO report proposals, but it, it don't make it. You know, Chair Guy, being a member of parliament, yes. is entitled <coughs> to his own opinion. Yes. And his opinion is not necessarily a reflection of the party's stand on, on, on any particular issue. He, he is a Kenyan, just like I am Kenyan. He can even propose the president to be there for 40 years. I mean, that is his personal prerogative. It, it, it is not the, the UDA party's uh, stance or musimamo that, you know, uh, the presidential term limit should be extended. That is his own personal opinion. But with that as it may, we must also be careful not to gag people in terms of airing. Because under the Bill of Rights, we gave ourselves this constitution and we said we have the, you know, we have the right to speech. And you see, if Gerald Gay decides that him in his own heart, he feels that one day he could be a president and seven years would be enough for him, we cannot gag him from saying and speaking his mind. Just like he cannot gag me as, as Mongai and say that yes. I cannot speak towards retaining the presidential terms yes. as they are in the constitution. But I'll also tell you something. It's at all order to, to constitutionally amend this because Article 256 and 257 guides Kenyans on how we can amend the constitution that we have. That's it. That's it. And part of that is a plebiscite. And especially in instances where we seek to alter the nature of executive, we'll have to go for a referendum, <laughs> okay? Yeah. And several attempts have been made to do those things, including in 2020, what we had, so to speak, as BBI, where we collected signatures, went through the county assemblies, found our way to the National Assembly, only for the Supreme Court, Kutufania Ile Kitu, you know, you recall. But the beauty about this is that as a country, it allows us to test our constitutional limits. You imagine now, twice, after conducting elections or thrice, the Supreme Court has sat down to decide as the final arbiter in terms of elections. And you know that is the court of last resort and it is the only court that has jurisdiction over presidential matters in this country, specifically presidential elections. Through the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, we have tested the metal of that particular court. And therefore, I do not believe that testing the limits of our constitution is necessarily a bad thing. What I want to discourage is the obsession that for us to prosper as a country, it must be tinkered on extending presidential terms or presidential limits for any particular candidate. That is the obsession I would want us to deviate from. But in terms of public discourse and in terms of people having a conversation, let people talk. Someone wants uh, a president for 20 years, sawa sawa, let them have discussion under trees. They could have them on top of trees, on top of buildings, here on set. I mean, it's their constitutional right to speak and to speak in a manner that suits them. Does that? But, but do you, just before I cross over to William as well, let, let's, let's say that it's five years. Um, Guy, and we do know how it goes, and this is where Gay is coming from, that in the first one year, you're essentially trying to set ground 
for the things you're going to do. You're doing your appointments, you're changing a couple of people here and there in the state offices to help you implement your agenda. And that can take you well in um, to your first term. I mean, when these names are going to go back to the National House, debated and, and, and brought back to you for approvals and all that. It's not that, well, that's pretty much the first one year or some good period within the one year that has essentially been eaten into the formalities of laying your government. And then the final year, you're essentially just campaigning to try and, and come back to office and continue the good job that you've done. So when you look at it, it's saying, well, guys, it's just three years that we're giving any other government to go into the, to go in and, and implement their manifesto. On our basis, he says, you know what? Let's give them seven. First one year, get into office, five years of working, and then the last one, uh, if you want to go into campaigns to get to come back, it's it's up it's upon you. Does it make sense from where you from where you're sitting this morning? No, I, whereas the argument sounds valid that you know when you get into power, mm -hmm. the first year you are in essence setting up your government, oh, and the last actually is even most of the times it's not the last year. The last two years, you again go back to the campaign trail because then the opposition leaders have already hit the ground running. running. Yes. So, so to speak, you only have two years to do anything substantive. So the argument might sound valid and reasonable at that particular juncture. But upon further interrogation, I do not think that it would hold water. Why? Because by the time you go to the Kenyan voter and seek for votes, you have a manifesto. Remember, we have the plan. And, and by the time you get into office, remember when the president was sworn in, the first thing he did on the first day he was sworn in is to sign an executive order to have the, was it seven or nine um, Supre appeal, yes. appeal court yes. judges, yes. you know, employed immediately. Does that did not require a further two years or one year for planning. That was something within the purview of the president. So there are low hanging fruits that any government, and remember, all governments exist in perpetuity. What changes is the head of state and government at any particular point. But government programs, so to speak, are supposed to exist in perpetuity. And that is why, even when a new government comes into power, you still go to a public hospital and find the same doctor. No one will stop treating you because the president has changed. And so all governments exist in perpetuity. And therefore, by the time you get into power, yes. you must have a plan. You must have a manifesto, and you must hit the ground running, so to speak. Yes. Because then the argument will become, <coughs> okay, maybe you don't need one year, maybe you need two years to get your house in order. So how many then more years do you need for you to do anything substantive? Scientifically, you can't quantify. Yes. And therefore, it is incumbent upon anyone running for public office to understand that government is like building blocks. You come and build upon where the other person had stopped. And that's the challenge we actually, it's a, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good debate you've brought on board because even when you look at members of parliament, you find that an exiting member of parliament had started some classrooms with CDF. Then this one comes and decides classrooms are not good, leaves it three quarter, and goes and starts doing boreholes or something like that. Then if he does not make it, another person comes in and starts anew. But when we have the mentality and the mindset that we all work towards the Kenyan population, even where I find my colleague had done three quarter of a classroom, I will endeavor to finish it because the project is not mine. The project belongs to the constituents in that particular constituency. And therefore, I would say that yes. even... If, even though at face value the argument appears to hold water, if I was to convince, if I was to not convince, if I was to conceive, if I was to make someone conceive now, that's, uh, I need nine months for me to see results. Those are already nine months that are gone, assuming you are counting to five years, okay? But do you know Simba, by the time the child is five years, there will be one year shy of going to grade one. I mean, that's a milestone in itself. By the time now we get into year two, that is the, the next term, this kid is now in grade, in grade what, almost grade four. That's a person who's now eating and chewing gedheri. 
that is a fully grown child and it is the responsibility now even if i was to exit as a parent whoever takes over is not taking over from scratch in terms of the child they can actually bring them up to become an adult yes, so the obsession that we always need more time to grow time will always be there but under different kinds and types of leadership that's it well um, look at look at this proposal by Cherar gay isn't that when you look at it it is, it is going to be hard for you to say, let's go in for five years. First one year, forming your government. <clears throat> Final one year, again, you're again seeking um, um, mandate from uh, the people of Kenya to take you back to office. So this guy's got three years. So Chirage says, well, let's give them seven. Two, first one year, setting up office. Final one year, you go back and campaign and let the people of Kenya judge what you've done. But we're going to give you five full years then of of working well you know uh, for a leader and uh, to be specific uh, this particular government yes. should be having the ability to walk and chew gum at the same time so this uh, idea that uh, the the first one year there was this day, uh, disruption and trying to settle down then the last one year will be hitting the road to campaign is actually it's neither here nor there mm -hmm. yeah so if uh, le speaking of leadership then uh, whoever comes to leadership should come with the whole package as a whole because uh, there's no much room for experiments because we're, whenever you're experimenting with uh, with the country you actually put in our lives at risk and you can see right now what's happening Does it? people cannot go to the hospital so suppose uh, one uh, gets involved in an accident outside outside here uh, there's uh, definitely the chance chances of them surviving is going to be to be minimal so it's very very pathetic to have such a government which is so disorganized because uh, and the frameworks are, have already been put the frameworks are there it's not like uh, any government that comes in place comes uh, in place to reinvent the wheel uh, the constitution is very clear that are the arms of government and there's a way government is arranged uh, speaking of uh, uh, the executive and the framework is very clear that uh, the, your ministers, the ministers that we are, have, we are going to have to, uh, to, 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 to hire to run your government are not supposed, in this case, to be politicians. But what are we having here? We are having a situation where the president went ahead and the deputy president went ahead and uh, gave us uh, politicians for ministers, which is uh, against the spirit of... Uh, of uh, of just running this government. So yes. uh, a very good example is uh, this uh, minister for, for health. When we had uh, uh, doctor, this doctor's uh, crisis, the minister was somewhere in, uh, in one of those days, it was somewhere in Tanzania in a funeral. And you wonder what, uh, what was she doing at the funeral? Of course, she was trying to lay her own framework for the for her election as a uh, as governor in, in probably Tanzania County, and uh, it's, it's all out there in the public domain. So we're actually having a government which is run by people who are not organized, and that's why we are seeing this, uh, all these excuses, we're having all these excuses that one year is not enough. Yes. And uh, the last, uh, because uh, five years is not, is not enough because we used one year for this, and we, used, uh, we, will, we are also foreseeing ourselves using the last one year doing campaigns. Yeah, because uh, after all, uh, the government should be big enough. There, are, there should be campaigners, and there should be executives, and there should be technocrats who run the shows. Yes. So this government should be able to chew gum and work at the same time. If they cannot, then uh, they have no business being in uh, be governing us. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, just before we clear the conversation on this particular topic, uh, Mr. Mungai. Why will, why have we not seen the same energy in trying to quieten these noises now from the party, just like we did when Yakub said it? I mean, there's nothing different from what Raval suggested. Uh, ex excuse me, yes. excuse me, yes. Mr. Simba. Uh, there's this question that you had actually asked, but uh, seems like uh, it got lost be before you get to, yes. to Mr. Mungai. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, these sentiments were from uh, by Mr. <coughs> Chirangai. 
Looking at this formation of the UDA government, we know the president, uh, president is from uh, the Rift Valley region, the deputy president is from the uh, from, from Mount Kenya region. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suppose by the way things are in our country, I assume that Mr. Mungai must be leaning towards uh, Mr. Gashakwa's side. So it should actually be worrying for Mr. M Mungai, should actually be worried by these sentiments because they're not coming from uh, Gashakwa's uh, uh, sect. They're coming from the president. So they should be worried that, and they should be uh, actually asking themselves, let me, uh, Okay, let me let me inform them because they seem you know, to be lost in the waters. Yeah? Uh -huh. yeah, they should be asking themselves why are we having these sentiments? Because um, it's a uh, it's clear that uh, having formed this government, uh, the next person who should be uh, succeeding the the president is actually the deputy president. So we expect that in uh, after ten years the deputy president is going is going to be the flag bearer of UDA. But why are we having all these sentiments coming from the president's uh, side, yeah? Is it because they are trying to throw the Agashagwa under the bus? Yeah, so actually, Mr. Mungai should be condemning these sentiments as much as I am condemning them. Yeah, <laughs> from a, uh, at least from a from selfish uh, perspective. perspective yeah. isn't it? Oh, oh, on yeah. that basis, and that's the same sort of question that I asked, the energy at which the party came out to condemn any other person who was talking on, on the grounds of... Um, uh, article 136 of the Kenyan Constitution. I mean, you, you guys came out quite quick to stop it in 2023. But when Raval stood up and said, I mean, we should give you 25 years, when, when these statements keep on coming and, and Gerard Gay as well keeps on coming and saying, well, let's give him seven years, let's change the Constitution, you didn't come out as strongly as you did during that time for your coup. You know, Simba, when... Uh why the president is not and the deputy president is not really interested in this debate yes if you're taking a shower simba not a shower if you decide to go and bathe in the river and a madman when you're in the river naked comes and takes your clothes and starts running away <laughs> with them <laughs> <laughs> what is, what is your course of action? Do you <laughs> do you, <laughs> do you get out of the river? <laughs> in this case, in this case the, the and start, of the presidency huh? and start and start chasing uh, the, the madman. You know, <laughs> sometimes for the sake of your own sanity, mm -hmm. you need to let the madman be mm -hmm. and accept that uh, you know a madman will always be a madman, and that. Even though it appears that some battles are fashioned so that you may respond, yes. it is important sometimes to just stay in the water and allow the madman to do his thing and hope that you can marshal help elsewhere as and when the right time comes. So I, I, I believe the president and the deputy president have a lot on their plate, that which involves advancing the agendas of the plan, which, by the way, we... I keep on telling you every morning we wake up, we are implementing the plan and it is working to perfection mm -hmm. despite the croaking of frogs and naysayers in the water. We are still, the cows are still drinking water <laughs> and therefore I, I do not believe it is in their place or mm -hmm. in their interest to keep on engaging in endless banter mm -hmm. and uh, bar talk. I think it should be left to that. Mm -hmm. But um, an assertion has been made that there are two different Kenya Kwanza sides, the, the Gachagua side and the president side. There are, there are no two sides, it's only one side. The, the presidency, which encompasses the president and his deputy president. All those other things uh, are what, you know, emanate from and allude to and end up as rumor mongering yes. and gossip. In the, in the sense of rebuking it, if you're in the shoes of one of Malala, or the president, or the deputy president, would you come out strongly and say, this conversation is not something that we want to have now. It's only the best interest of Kenya when we have a constitution that's quite clear about it. That, the, that, that, the silence, that, does it not make us read otherwise, that somebody somewhere properly is testing the waters and saying... No, the party has already done that. The party already did that, did that through the Secretary General, yes. Cleophas Malala. So we, uh, this, this other one is, uh, as I told you, is, is banter. I, there are things that people discuss when they are chewing maize. 
there are, there are, there are things when, when people are in muta uh, chewing on some leaves and some bubble gums mm -hmm. and eating jugukaranga here and there. Those are the stories that yeah. that people have uh, common folk That's that. that have no bearing or whatever it, it, or any is consequence it, to it, driving it, the national agenda. Is it all okay for us to look at the reaction of the president when Raval suggested that and say, oh, maybe he likes it because he, 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 he looked like a man who enjoyed that particular statement. He, he didn't seem worried. He, he started laughing at it. No, the president, when he was sworn in and when he was given the sword, he vowed to protect the constitution. And what does the constitution say? It guarantees people the freedom to speak and say what's on their mind. Yes. As the president, what do you do? You guarantee those rights. It's very funny that... Should, uh, yes. Should, I, should have the president stood up and said, I know Raval, you enjoy this, but I, I can't go for 25 years. Because you know, it's very funny that... Uh, uh, my friend is actually t remained in Nassau. The president was uh, uh, vowed to protect the constitution, and uh, in this case, uh, the likes of Cherangai have their rights of speech, speeches. But uh, when it came to our Mandamano, we had no rights to assemble and we had no rights to, to dissent. No, uh, it's very, very no, funny. No, no, no. no. <laughs> there is a distinction. Uh, you had no right to destroy, to destroy private property. and public property. Uh, there must be a clear distinction. Uh, even the doctors the right now, to assemble and picket. And I've not seen the doctors destroying any property, but yesterday they were tear gassed and clobbered. But uh, all in all, uh, these sentiments are not new, even in the, the last regime. Yes. Uh, we had uh, such uh, pronouncements. And I remember vividly uh, the, the President Uru Kenyatta Emeritus uh, rising up and uh, saying in his, in his words, a quote, Sisi tuna eshimu katiba. After serving um, my 10 years, I'll just go in and rest. And I think was responding to uh, Francis Atuoli, who was very loud on uh, proposing that... Uh, or, or rather suggesting that Uru Kenyatta was still very young and he should let, actually get a position after which was not re, anywhere but in the constitution at that time. You take seriously. Yeah, so... <laughs> hmm? How can you quote Atuoli on national TV? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, having said that, uh, I was actually expecting the president himself also to condemn such sentiments yes. because uh, they should not... Uh, these are things which have the... They have a capacity to, to destabilize uh, the UDA camp. Uh, because, uh, of course, uh, politics have been what, he, what it is. There's a uh, uh, Gashakwa's camp and there's a uh, UDS camp. But uh, the president was actually he was, he was very happy. So, uh, Gashakwa should actually be worried. Pretty much. By extension, Mr. Mungai. Yeah. Does it? Guess what? That essentially lays the background to an issue that we're going to talk about. And this morning, Sheila, if you can then, I just want, to, I just want you to take us to um, the dailies this morning. And if you can then take us to the standard, because it's got the story that we're picking this morning, that there seems to be a, a, a meeting, or there seems to have been a meeting um, with one Kashagwa and... Moses Wetangula, and they're calling it United by Fear Factor, Mr. Bungai. And it, it, it's, it's in line with what it is that we're talking about this morning, because it's about these political terms that we're talking about, not, in, not essentially extending them, but in the sense of, if we're not careful, we're not going to get our chunk. Uh, and I'll read for you. Uh, Deputy President Brigadi Gashagwa, National Assembly Speaker Moses Wetangula, held a meeting to discuss government agenda at a time the two leaders are under political pressure. Guess what? I've, I've sat here with um, analysts who actually come in and correct uh, newspaper headlines. Is, is this something that you may want to correct, Mr. Mungai? United by fear factor. Would you want to correct it? I think so. <laughs> Most importantly, <laughs> I believe it should be corrected. Okay. To, to, could, could, you call, could you correct this headline? What would you like to, what would you like to United correct United by progressive agenda. Because remember, one is the head of the legislative arm of government, legislature, very powerful man. Mm -hmm. The other, the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. Yes. This, the head, uh, deputy head of the executive. These are men united for a common goal and a common purpose.
to discuss the development of the nation called Taza, Kenya. Taza, I leave it there because we're going to come and so you put it in proper context. Um, well, um, here's the thing. I'm going to read for you. Um, this quote is by a political analyst. They never stated his name. And they're saying that, therefore, Gashagwa and Gwetangula could be united by fear, informed by the very person who should be cautious to disorient 2022 political arithmetic. Would you, would, you, would you like to correct this particular headline, or you would just stay it? Uh, the headline is spot on. I would not correct it. Uh, if uh, anything, I would add something beside it, and I would uh, quote the uh -huh. enemy of my of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Guess what? That sets the stage then for a conversation that we're going to get into in the second part of our um, show this morning. Why would Kashawa and Wetangula? get into a meeting and is it true that they're united by fear once we come back which is that fear and once we come back also mr mungai is gonna make sense of his correction of united but what did you call it mr mungai by united by development, development agenda. agenda that's it once we come back right here on the morning draft a distinguished institution of higher learning dedicated to nurturing your intellectual curiosity and pushing the boundaries of knowledge. From state-of-the-art laboratories to modern libraries equipped with the latest resources, we provide you with the tools you need to succeed. Choose from a wide range of programs designed to prepare you for challenges of tomorrow's world. Whether in STEM, humanities, business or the arts, our strong industry connections and career service support will help you translate your education into a meaningful career opportunities upon graduation. Join a vibrant community of scholars from around the world, fostering cultural exchange, collaboration and lifelong friendships. Book your space now for September intakes. Log in to https colon slash slash www.uonbi.ac.ke for a wide range of course to choose from. You can also contact plus 254-020-491-0000 or email Email us at pr at ounbi.ac.ke. Tara, tunataka kusema asante sana Loto Foundation kwa mambo mazuri ambayo wameweza kutufanyia leo wakaaji wa hapa Kaptara, wakaaji wa hapa Salawa, wakaaji wa hapa Mujukuo, mpaka wakaaji wote ambao wanatoka hapa Baringo County. Naambia Loto Foundation asante kwa kazi nzuri wanayofanya. Mungu awabariki. Every time you play Lotto, 25% goes to the Lotto Foundation, which supports our fellow Kenyans through various causes. Thank you for your help. Together, we are changing lives. Buy Credo Chop Chop across all networks bill stress. Go to M-Pesa, pay bill number 3300. Now wake account number yako na number simu that you want to recharge. It's quick, convenient and hassle free. In just a few clicks, buy airtime, M-Pesa pay bill 3300. Account, your number to stay topped up and connected anytime, anywhere, Chop Chop. zungumzie swala la uh, huduma ya afya na kazi na kupata pesa gani inachukua nafasi ya kwanza people are there to serve but where, wherever there is service actually there must be uh, motivation wametilia maanani hela 
Hovi pia si mbaya. Ikiwa ni pesa inaanza ama ni huduma inaanza, mwenyeji atasema hili na aseme lile angalau sauti yake ipate kusikika. Huduma ikuze kwanza. Mm. Kwa sababu hama daktari mm. walitwa na Mungu. Hauwezi kwenda hospitali useme unalipa kwanza ndio udumiwe. Udumiwe kwanza ndio ulipe. Service bado itakaa number 1 ni priority. But pia kuko na ile moral au watu wanakuwa pewe moral ya. Yeah. Bila shaka ni swala ambalo linaathiri wewe mwananchi wa kawaida na mimi binafsi. That's it then. All right. She love you can take us back to that particular headline. Uh, it's one that's going to make sense for us this morning then. It is United by Fear Factor. And I'm going to read it now. Deputy President Rigadi Gachagua and National Assembly Speaker Moses Petangula have held a meeting to discuss government agenda at a time the two leaders are under political pressure. Mm. Let's start correcting it. Huh? But why would you start correcting this one? They've held a meeting to discuss government agenda at a time when the two leaders are under political pressure. Mr. Mungai, what mm. political pressure is Rotangula and Kashawa under? Kashawa would understand. Well, even though people say that a frog does not jump in broad daylight unless something is after its life, I would want to disagree with that saying, especially in view of the fact that in broad daylight we can see the Deputy President Kashawa and uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly, yes. Moses Wetangula. Mm -hmm. I would say that they are not united by the fear factor as yes. the standard so reports. I think that's the wrong assertion. Remember, these two people are at the top echelons of society. One is the Speaker of the National Assembly, which is the legislative arm of government, and the other is the deputy head of the executive. Now, when those two people meet, they meet to plan the agenda of the nation. And specifically so, why, why it is important for Wetangula to visit the deputy president is because the Mount Kenya region has a raft of issues that they would want addressed in the national house, okay? And who is the better man to do that than Moses Wetangula? And therefore, I would, I would because I, I, I followed the conversation that they had, I mean, it's very clear. When the, when the deputy president who comes from Mount Kenya region summons Moses Wetangula, he was summoning him because of the legislative agenda with particular reference to propagation of the economic agenda of the people of Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. There are several bills that are in the House that needs to be expedited, such as uh, the coffee reforms bill. Mm -hmm. Those are things that touch on, uh, on, on Mount Kenya people. There is the issue of avocado. You are already aware that a committee has been formed and legislation is in the pipeline. That also is a preserve of what Wetangula needs to look into. And therefore, it is important for the deputy president to keep on consulting national leaders and especially for the welfare of the people of the Mount Kenya region. That's it. But let, when you look at exactly what's going around Gashagwa and Moses Wetangula, other than the government agenda, what pressure is Gashagwa under in the Mount Kenya region? Political Gashagwa. pressure. The, the deputy president is not under any political pressure from the Mount Kenya region. We, we, the people of the mountain, have no reason whatsoever to put the deputy president under political pressure, except where we feel that our economic fortunes are being threatened in one way or another. But as it stands out, the man has shown his mettle. He has come out strongly to defend the interest of the Mount Kenya people. You remember when the issue of ITIMS became a thorn in the flesh? Uh, the deputy president was on the forefront, went ahead and formed the avocado committee. And therefore, they, we the people of Mount Kenya have no reason whatsoever 
to to put political pressure there is a way we know how to iron out our issues and we feel proud as the people of Mount Kenya when the deputy president is able to summon Moses Wetangula for them to discuss issues of the nation coming back to you on that say no yeah you, you said you want to correct it and you said your enemy is the enemy of my enemy is my friend is my friend you put know, it in context you know uh, it is written in the bible that uh, one day in heaven is like a thousand days and a thousand days likewise is uh, like one day and that has also been the case in the game of politics that one day in politics is like a thousand days so uh, there is uh, you know the last regime that we had uh, it was very clear that uh, that kind of marriage was a marriage of convenience and uh, seems like uh, this other new regime was also a marriage of convenience and in a marriage of convenience the couple sleeps on the same bed but uh, they sleep with the one eye open so what we are seeing right now is a, a replica could be a replica of what we had in the last regime but uh, politics being uh, what it is and uh, how dynamic uh, it gets uh, and one must uh, come to realize that and I think Ruto has also realized that that uh, to win the next general election they need more votes they actually need more supporters than they had in 2022 uh, because uh, as, he, uh, as, it, uh, as we can all see the ground is, uh, the, the, the ground is hostile for them in Mount Kenya, the ground is hostile. They are being echoed in Bomet, in Eldoret. Actually, in their strongholds, they are being echoed actually more than they would be echoed in um, other parts of the country. So, the votes that uh, Gashagwa might have brought in, uh, in, the, in this basket must be, will not be sufficient in the next election. And the votes that Wetangula and Mudavadi brought in the last election uh, to this basket will not, definitely will not be enough in the next general elections. So, and one wonders, one wonders where will these votes go to? Definitely they will go to the other opposing side. So, things must change. Things must change because, uh, so Ruto will not depend on Wetangula and Ruto might not depend on uh, Gashagwa because, uh, and even Boni Alwale himself, yeah? Uh, I had one uh, Senator Sifuna saying that uh, uh, behind, the, behind the cameras, uh, uh, Boboni Alwali actually uh, opened up to, <laughs> to him to tell him that actually things are very rough. Uh, you see, this guy is not taking us uh, well, mm -hmm. and the people in, our, in the villages are uh, actually not uh, happy with, with them. So, there are new leaders. Leaders do emerge. And uh, we, have, we have leaders who have actually proven that uh, they can challenge uh, the likes of uh, Wetangula and Mudavadi. And uh, such a one in Western Kenya is uh, none other than Governor Natembea. We have leaders on the other side of Mount Kenya who have also shown that they can uh, challenge uh, the Deputy President Gashagwa. And such a one is uh, Dindi Nyoro. So the games must change. Uh, William Ruto being a, a schemer that he is uh, in a devilish manner uh, must pull some strings and i'm not surprised that uh, is the one that uh, that's pulling the strings in western region and uh, is also m must be the one pulling strings in uh, in mount in, in mount kenya because there have been allegations that uh, there is someone some very uh, some big man somewhere who is uh, sponsoring uh, in dindinoro because uh, actually they can't wait campaigns that uh, dindinoro has been having uh, actually uh, a normal MP cannot afford, can, cannot afford. So there must be a big man somewhere who is uh, trying to stir the waters in uh, in, uh, in central Kenya, and I suspect it must be William Ruto. So William Ruto is also the one who has been uh, suspected or acu been accused of, uh, of of funding this tower movement, and it's actually gaining uh, momentum. Yeah, within a very very short time, it's gaining momentum. So one must actually be afraid, and one should be afraid. And in the next in the next six months, things will actually be different. Yes, and uh, so to speak, mm -hmm. Wetangula and uh, Gashagwa are afraid, and so the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And there comes the meeting. Mungai, could you could you could you pay um, tribute? 
to what we've observed in the Mount Kenya region. One, that it, it actually took up the president's intervention to stop Ndini Nyoro. That 15 members of parliament came out and said, for us, in a 2027 dress, we've decided we're going to be represented by one Ndini Nyoro. Because a split were governors within the Mount Kenya region also came out and said, uh, but we, cannot, we can't observe this going on within the party. We are standing behind Rigadiga Shagwa. And they came out. There was, there was a proper split. You could see it in the Mount Kenya region that Ndini Nyoro was forced to address this particular issue. You do remember the, the famous presser saying, my, my, my party deputy president is Rigadiga Shagwa. My president is one... Um, Dr. President, Dr. William Ruto, so no other question around these particular areas. Then Rigadi Gashagwa stands up and says, Avijana wadogo, wambia onyamaze bana. Sisi ndio tunajua, vile mamba ya Mount Kenya inendelea. So when you look at these two particular scenarios, Mr. Mungai, you can't come back and say, well, it's not under political pressure, because we could see it, we've reported it. Why would you stand behind a man who's not under pressure? Oh, well, on, on this issue of, of the, is it a marriage of convenience between the deputy president and Moses Wetangula? Mm -hmm. Is it an engagement? Something. Well, let's speak to the camaraderie. Yes. In what the, the Sunday, the standard calls united by the fear factor. Yes, and let me speak to Natembea specifically. When I observe Natembea and his so-called Tawe movement, I see what we in my mother tongue we call mwakiwa uh, mafefe. So to, to loosely translate, you know, fire of uh, grass fire, so to speak. And, and why I, I consider his to be grass fire or mwakiwa mafefe is because we, we have seen many leaders, especially in that region and especially Azimio related that come up with a lot of bulahaha, and hula balu and amount to zero or to nothing. A case in point is uh, I always admire Babu Owino. I've seen how much he's done for ODM. I've seen how he, he would go to extra lengths. Yes. And when it came to awarding the chairman of one of the house committees, the man cried bitterly because those folks would not remember him. I have seen people like Edwin Sifuna who comes, by the way, from a region where, and from a family, once one of them was branded as the seven bearded sisters, comes from also, you know, the, the, the same people are the people that gave us the likes of Shikuku. Yes. And when I look at Sifuna, I recall one time he wanted to be the sec gen of ODM, uh, together with Ababu Namwamba, and how ODM orchestrated their own you know, Tamwell, so as so to speak, to destroy their meeting. Yes. And and I see, I see people who are running very fast, to no good. And that's the challenge with you know when if you've ever cooked with firewood, you know that the bigger logs burn better and they burn longer. But you must never be excited by this fire that is always pushed by the wind, that appears the flames and the embers appear to be so huge and you get excited. I mean, that's fire that is not sustainable. And that is the same fire that I foresee with, with now the, the infamous. I hear the movement, the Tawe movement is, is made up of a general called Natembea and a lieutenant called Sifuna. Mm -hmm. I think that's, now that's, when we speak of marriages of convenience and marriage of disillusionment, I think then those two people are, are involved in that kind of a marriage. I think Wetangula is a force to reckon with, no, but that was to speak to Natembea That's and it, his but, Tawe movement. But under political pressure back at home, because there's a man who's essentially gaining ground in his bucket. No, he's not gaining ground. He's sponsoring, he's sponsoring people to look like he's gaining ground. And that's why I've told you, yes. don't worry. What you just need to do is wait. It is where just wait. That, and I've told mm. you, Moses Wetangula, but, but, Moses yes. Masika Wetangula, yes. mm -hmm. comparatively in terms of fire, yes. is the big log that burns slowly 
and that burns for long. There's a man who's pouring water on this big log. And so you, got, you, you have to look for ways of stopping him from getting the buckets. No, because you see. Because if you don't, then. No, uh, you're urinating on a huge log that's yes. not necessarily put out the fire. Yes, <laughs> but, but you've got to stop it. It's got, it's got four years to do it, so you've got to stop it now. I mean, when, when, you look, when you look at the kind of pressure that Wetangula and Gashangwa are in, it is like, it's like and like. I think Natembea just needs to take a walk. Uh, that, that's all he needs to do. I mean, um, <laughs> Mr. Bugai, do you, do you, I, I like the way you play it, cool, but, but uh, he's not. No, I must. No, Natembea is taking a walk. He's huh. living up to his name. Uza, if, if you spoke to Natembea, he's not going to act as cool as you're acting this morning. He's a man who's saying, look here, I am the one. I'm the reference point when it comes to this side of politics. So you go tell that guy he's, not, he's no longer there. Uh, um, let me tell you, I've told you, yes. uh, Natembea is taking a walk together with his brother Edwin Sifuna. They are beating the bushes. Yeah. We call it in my mother tongue, Kuhuragidaka. I don't know how to translate that. Ah, you know, ah, I speak, ah, I, I, I'm like Gashagua. <laughs> I think in mother tongue first, and then I say well, it in English. <laughs> but I have not answered, I have not answered uh, concerning uh, uh, the issue of the deputy president vis-a-vis -vis Ndindi Nyoro. Does it? Um, that's, that's a battle that never existed. And that's a battle that was created by naysayers and distractors. It's it's not an existing hold on, hold it's on, not an existing yeah, hold on, you battle. Say, you, but let me tell you something. Just, just let me on. tell you something. Mr. No, no, Mr. wait, Mr. wait. Mr. Then you ask me the question. Hold on, hold wait, on. wait, wait, wait. On Have that, you seen on that basis of it never existed? But it was right there for you to see. No, it was not there for you for me to see. It was orchestrated for me to see. I I, I mean it's like when I go and watch why, a play. Why, why look, did the, look, the fifteen members of look, what did the fifteen How would I go home sad when I go to a theater and watch a play? Was where people have orchestrated different characters to perform the act. Where, where did the 15 members of parliament come from? That's why I'm telling you, why would I go home? Wh why, did the governors why would I be sad Hold on. Where, when where, I go to a theatre where, where did the governors come from? And Mr. watch a play, yes. and here is a character who is playing the role of wanting to be a president. My work is to be amused. If it's humor, my work is then to laugh. But even the main character is speaking about it. Who is the main character? Gashagwa spoke about no, it. No, Gashagwa said, yes. and this is where I was coming to. Yes. It's good to mentor young leaders, mm -hmm. and I admire Ndindi Nyoro for his brevity. That's I right. actually admire him. But you know, Simba, when you watch a goat, I'm not sure whether you are a farmer. I am a farmer. I'm when a you, farmer. Watch, when yes. you watch a kid suckling a goat, yes. when you watch that activity, you might imagine that the kid is actually hitting the goat. Okay? Yeah. Have you watched them circling? Yeah, yeah. It circles and then once yeah. in a while it, it hits, hits the other. Yeah. You might think they are fighting. But no, the mother is, the mother once the kid hits like that, the mother is enjoying because the mother can tell the kid is growing and the kid is circling well. Now those kind of soft blows are what Ndindi Nyoro is doing to Gashagua. The man is simply circling from the bigger <laughs> entity and the bigger entity is happy that the young one is growing. Full stop. <laughs> What is this that we need to keep on debating Oze, and arguing? Oze, but, 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 but they are saying they got to stop suckling like that. Then. No, 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 no. They, they we are not telling him to stop. In fact, we are encouraging him to continue suckling like that. That is the best way to grow. Well, the president said, we thought mentoring this young man within the party was a good thing. But if they continue like this, we're going to stop. Yes, but even the mother knows that once the kid starts engaging in some games, it might be detrimental to the kid. It does not mean you don't love the kid. Mm -hmm. It means that you allow them room to grow and you allow them room to have a few circuses. But uh, by and large, you, you mentor the young goats to become he goats in future. Asa, Seno, here's the thing. That when you look at Natemaya and Weta, when you look at Gashago and Wetangula, they're under the same political pressure. Let's, let's play like this you think you play out the incident where 15 members of parliament are coming out from the North Kenya region saying for us in 2027 it's going to be dead in Europe. Would you also play out the governors, uh, there are several of them who came from the Mount Kenya region and said, number one, we want that constitution changed, the party constitution, so that we only have one deputy to mirror the national political um, the situation in the country. And number two, that we stand strong behind Kachagua. When you look at those two scenarios, and then you go back to the western, uh, western side, where every other person is now looking at Wetangula and Atembea, it's essentially 
political grounds that are shifting or thereof. Let's first start with the um, Kashagwa situation. The president has spoken about it. Kashagwa himself has spoken about it. Fifteen members of parliament come out boldly and do a presser and say, we want Nidinyoro for 2027 as running mate. Fifteen governors plus come out and say, well, look here. We want or we are standing behind Rigadi Kashagwa. Is that not the pressure that we're looking at now to make this headline uncorrectable, just like Mungai was trying to correct it? Well, Mungai actually came up with a kikuyu saying, would you repeat it again? Uh, what? The, the, one, the one about the, the one about the one about does it uh, have anything to do with uh, a passing glance you know there's a reggae song that uh, goes it was a passing glance mm -hmm. that uh, yes yes it's the just a passing analogy. glance yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes that's correct yes you're right yeah, I'm so glad he understands <laughs> at understand. this point we should end the show <laughs> Well, uh, we have converged. Uh, I have to understand in order to respond. <laughs> please, please call the person you call in the ear <laughs> and tell that? them it's now time to close the show. Shila, if you can, you can let us call over the <laughs> Okay, well, you wait for what's coming next. Wait for what's coming next. <laughs> no, I already know it's in the subject. Wait, wait for what's coming next. <laughs> please, <laughs> you know now the beauty about this Kenya Kwanzaa government yeah. is now even we can afford tea here in the set. Please take some tea. Uh, this, this is good discussion. Uh, and I hope you don't turn. Yeah, so see, actually, yeah. I was actually listening to you, mm -hmm. and uh, I was listening to you to understand you and to comprehend, not to respond, not just to, to respond. Now that I've understood what you are saying in Kikuyu, I can now respond. That you can uh, wish it. You can have that wishful thinking that uh, this is just a passing glance. Yes. And uh, if you were the former president in Senegal, that would suit you very well. Because uh, you actually must have thought that uh, that uh, young generation who, uh, that was uh, giving him sleepless nights would probably just be what you are saying, a passing glance. But uh, look at who, who we have as president right now, uh, a 44-year-old youth. Uh, I'd said earlier that leaders emerge, and that's something that uh, will not be should not be considered as a passing glance. Yes. Not in Kenya, not in Senegal, not in any part of Africa. That's yeah. what's happened right now. Yeah. Now, case uh, case example, uh, we have so many strong leaders who have been there in uh, in in uh, Luland, but. Uh, Ask, ask if you, anyone uh, along in the streets, uh, ask them on this question, that who do you think is going to inherit Raila Odinga? And uh, one name will not miss. That name is Babu Weno. Babu Weno is only 34 years. Yes. Or uh, actually just a few months uh, shy from being 35 years old. And one wonders why is uh, Opio Wandai who has been uh, in politics for so, so long, why is, it, why, why is it that his name is not coming up? There's uh, James Orengo has been there ever since uh, the fight for multi-party democracy. Why is his name not cropping up in such a debate? Yes. And uh, we also have uh, other strong leaders like uh, Governor Anyang Nyongo, you see, who are, who are mature enough if, we are, if uh, age is uh, what uh, should actually be a consideration in this thing. Uh, the, same, the same goes uh, to Mount Kenya region. <coughs> Uh, speaking of uh, the likes of Ndindinyoro, and uh, I think that Ndindinyoro is a passing glance again because uh, it's just a, a young in the, in, the, in the game. Uh, leaders emerge. And uh, even in Western Kenya, we are seeing Natembe coming from nowhere and uh, is fighting for his space and uh, is getting quite a, a good number of followers. And, uh, and by the way, Wetangula, Wetangula is nothing without Mudavadi, and Mudavadi is nothing without Wetangula. And if, during the campaign period, you remember there were these memes that were like, we had Mudavadi on one side and uh, Wetangula on one side, then there was a quote saying, buy one, uh, get one free. <laughs> so that shows you that uh, Wetangula is a, uh, a light, political light, lightweight, and yes. so is uh, Mudavadi. So they have to come in together too to have uh, the, that, that much of weight. But um, what I'm trying to say is that uh, gatekeeping, the days and the ages of day, gatekeeping are, are long gone. 
uh, be it in politics, be, in, be it in whatever industry that, uh, that we have in, in this world, uh, those days are long gone. So there's this notion that uh, the youth must wait in line. The youth must wait in line. There's no yes. jump in queue. And uh, one, uh, is, uh, I think I had John Buddy uh, uh, trying to allude to uh, Bob Owino that in ODM there's no jump in queue because there's a, a party leader, there's a deputy party leader and another deputy party leader and a party chairman. So the likes of Bob Owino should, uh, should, should chill. Should, yeah, well, but now, yeah. no, so this is the notion that uh, Mudavadi yeah, has been in politics. Uh, for, uh, let's say for his entire life, because I was only 20 years old when uh, when Moi took him from the university and uh, made him uh, a minister. So the expectation from uh, such a leader is that uh, the likes of Natembeani they should come slow. I have to. I'm the one. Uh, I'm the the one who is next in line, and so is Wetangula, and so is uh, the likes of uh, Gashagwa. You no, know? they tend to look down upon. Uh, Upon, upon the upon the youth, yes. but uh, they should be afraid. Yeah, they should be afraid. Uh, the the Oparanyas, the Opio Wandai, yes. the Dindinoros, the Wetangula, and the Mudavadi, they should be afraid of the new generation. No, and they are rightly afraid. No, yeah. uh, but just uh, well, complete this conversation for us, Mugai, this morning. <clears throat> that for any other person watching from outside, it will make sense. Uh, but let, let's postulate. If it's indeed true that Rigadi Gashagwa is under political pressure, Moses Utangul as well is under political pressure, we can see exactly what's happening with Mudavadi. Mudavadi is ready to fall there and see and join the UDA party. Moses Utangul has been silent on this particular issue. If indeed it's true, that united the very strong, that is Moses Wetangula and Mudavadi, and one of those has broken off now when he wanted to join the ruling party, then it would make sense for Moses Wetangula and Rigadi Gashagwa to join forces. If indeed they were to join... What? That's, that's what I want to ask. If indeed they, they would like to join forces in the build-up to the 2027 general elections, that... That duet, let me call it that. What do you fo what do you foresee it becoming? Does it does it does it become a duet that has got political say in the country? Is it is it is it enough to divide the Western vote and the Central vote? I'm ju I'm just trying to weigh how a marriage between the deputy president and the speaker Moses Wetangula mm -hmm. would would lead into sort of ebbing away the 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 vote and to what to what gain to what end yes <clears throat> i believe that i as i said earlier i believe the reason they were together is the reasons that i explained economic reasons for their own for especially for the people of mount kenya yes but if both of them were to both get into studio and produce a song uh, maybe they would produce a song called Nimekubali Buana. Nimekubali, Najua Unakubali Mateso Yai, Ya Dunia. How does it go? Nimekubali Nasema Dio Buana. How does that lady sing? You know, my voice, unfortunately. It's, it's, not, it's not good for singing. It's not good for singing. So don't be singing that like And I don't have yeah. a key. <laughs> Apparently, when, when they were checking the keys in the keyboard. I the, could help you there. The, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will be, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe they, they, uh, they will be singing in Mekubali, in Mesema and Dio Buana. But that's on a light, on a light note. I believe yes. the two gentlemen mm -hmm. came together for purposes of advancing the interests of the nation. Yes. Specifically, the, the deputy president summoned uh, the speaker yes. to come and discuss matters especially to do with the legislative agenda yes, of the Mount Kenya people and I believe courtesy of that meeting and emanating from that meeting will be good gestures yes, and uh, and good stuff coming from that house yes, the um, August house Senor, 
clear this conversation. If indeed it is true what you're saying, that these guys are under political pressure, they're, they're really reading into 2027 and beyond that, what, this duet between Gashaga and Moses Wetangula, how strong can it be? Can it, can it have a say in, in the voting patterns in the country? <laughs> uh, looking at it, uh, let's say, uh, imagine what uh, they could, uh, could have been talking about. Yes. Uh, that could actually be of significance in the in the political arena. Probably, probably they are thinking of uh, forming a party because Gashagwa doesn't have a party. Yeah, their own party, uh, Gashagwa and Wetangula, uh, and uh, just trying to show Ruto that uh, if we, we we agreed earlier that Ruto is a schemer and a devilish one uh, for that matter. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so they are just trying. I'm sure they are just trying to also show. Uh, Naruto, that uh, we are not taking this line down. Yes. We can as well uh, shake the political uh, arena and we can also afford to give you sleepless nights because as far as we are concerned, you have been given a sleepless nights left, right and center in Mount Kenya, in Western. So this is just uh, another marriage of convenience and let's see how far it's going to, to go. But for now, I don't think there's much that uh, Wetangula and Mudavadi can bring. No, there's not much. Those are political lightweights. Actually, they have, they're actually in their position. You know, sometimes there's something we call luck. And uh, I've actually been uh, of this opinion that uh, Gashagua is not uh, the deputy president uh, because, he, because he, he deserves it or because uh, he was actually is fit for it or because... Uh, he has the, the argument to be won. Yes. He is the deputy president uh, by luck. Uh, the votes that uh, who, who William Ruto... Who is the president by luck? Of course, the, the deputy shot. president. How? Because the votes that uh, Ruto garnered from Mount Kenya, so, Ruto could have so garnered with anyone why, else. Why uh, as a matter of fact, if... Why hasn't <laughs> Raila capitalized on luck to become president? Maybe if, you could also explain that. If, if uh, William Ruto would have picked somebody like uh, a political lightweight, let's say, like Mata, Mata Karua, William Ruto will still have garnered uh, uh, those votes. So Gashagwa no, just, no, no. just came it, in. Why was it Raila last? Yes. Uh, Mount uh, Ruto is the kingpin of the Mount Kenya region. That's Says a fact, who? not who? Gashagwa. Says who? No, no, you know this is a national platform, Simba. When you are economical with the truth on a national platform, <laughs> which you have provided for Kenyans to be lied to, is it say, in order? Say no, say no. But well, Let me ask you, <laughs> does, uh, what, makes, what makes one uh, a pol uh, political kingpin of a, of a region? The same thing that does not make William the kingpin of Mount Kenya. Who's, who's the current kingpin of Mount Kenya region? In undisputed, none other the than His Excellency, the Deputy President, Rigadi Gashagwa. On what capacity? Because he was on the, one, the on highest capa office? Oh, no, one mm -hmm. on In capacity that, that he's the deputy president. Mm -hmm. Secondly, mm -hmm. because we, the people of Mount Kenya, have endorsed him as our kingpin. Okay, now, uh, answer me this question. Who is the kingpin of my western region? I don't know. I don't come from western. Ah, no, you should know. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he is an analyst. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. I am no, not a know it all. No, no, no. I'm not a know it all. The man is a pretender. No. He's evading the question. <laughs> no, I because can, I was actually, actually I expecting can, him. I yes. And you see, but anyway, he's not fully so. Yes. Let's assume that you don't know. And the reason, no, no, the reason know. why you don't know yeah. because there's none. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. You, know you don't know because there's none. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so there's none. That. You're informing, so, you're informing so the nation. So let's use you're that. You're informing let's the nation that. Mm -hmm. there is none. You see, Mudavadi is the prime minister. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wetangula is the speaker. The speaker of the national house. So those mm -hmm. are very high positions. Mm -hmm. But how comes uh, Wetangula is not the kingpin of, of the Luya community? He's Neither not. is Mudavadi uh, the kingpin of the Luya commu community. Maybe, maybe there are kingpins of the sect in Luya. In Luya, the answer is this. Here, the, the answer is this. Yes. Because holding the highest office, yeah, uh, on behalf of the community, 
the highest office ever for that community does not on make behalf one. Of, on behalf <laughs> of does not make one on. the kingpin of that no. community. So you, Gashagua, you Gashagua cannot, cannot be the kingpin. And take yes. Roman so that, that, that also applies in the So Gashagua will not be the kingpin of the Mount Kenya region simply because he holds the highest, and he's, highest office he's in that Gashagua. region. And he's not Gashagua. He's the yeah. deputy president. Is a, is a, is a, His Excellency is the deputy president regarding Gashagua, is the kingpin of Mount Kenya in, region. In the, in the event, in the event that we will call um, the deputy president, the kingpin of the Mount Kenya region, I've never seen. It's not in the event. Oza, oza, Please structure your oza, question. Oza, 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 I might not answer it. Mr. Ruda, it's the reality. No, no. It's the reality. Let me ask you. Mr. Bunga, Mr. Bunga, let me refresh this question this morning. I'm saying and that. And be very careful. Yeah, I yes, not yes, it. yes. Mr. Bugai, I'm saying that because in this particular uh, show this morning, you have somebody who's saying, is not the kingpin. So I've got to ask that question then in the right way to balance the conversation. Which is, who is the kingpin? No, hold on. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to ask that question. What are you asking? <laughs> What's the question? So this, this is exactly what I'm getting at. When you look at the uncontested kingpins in, in this country, and I'm going to go very far. Let me just mention one, Raila Molodinga. That in rare occasions, do we see his position being contested? No, it has been contested many times. There are people who have wanted to take the mantle from him. Mm -hmm. You remember the former governor of, of uh, this that one that Nairobi. was almost charged with murder. What was his name? Obado. 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 You remember, you remember the former governor of Nairobi, Kidero. Kidero. Those were passing glances. N no, but you cannot <laughs> say here. You cannot say here that people who are contesting is for it, the seat yeah. are passing is glances. So what I'm saying is, is it easily pointed to without, without, with, without no question. By who? No who is debates. pointing? When you count yourself do, do to you be pointing, oh, no, no. Oh, no. when you, you consider agree? yourself to do be you pointing, yes. don't you then consider my opinion also as a pointer? That, that's it. it is. Do you agree that he is the kingpin for the Nyanza region? Oh, who, Nani, uh, Raila Molo Odinga, undisputed. That's it. Thank yes. you very much. Yes, and that has never been in contention. Good, good, good. Please ask the same whether I consider, good, good. ask on. the same, no, yeah, subsequently, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna no, get there. subsequently, yeah, let, and as a follow-up, let me ask let's, on your behalf, let me ask on your behalf, do you then, Mungai, consider <laughs> the deputy president? <laughs> Sheila, <laughs> can you please hand over the directing of the show to Mr. To, Mungai this morning? His Excellency, the deputy president, Gashagwa, to be the kingpin of Mount Kenya, and what is the answer yes. and absolutely yes. yes and it's a good thing you've asked yourself that question so i go to the second question then do i go to the second question yeah please yes of thank course. you very much i handed over the mantle to you thank and you very much right mr questions. mungai so when when we go back to maybe three or four months back how many times has the position for Raila Odinga be contested how many governors have come to defend Raila Odinga as the rightful king kingpin for the nyanza region i'm not aware i'm not aware how as many? far as i'm concerned and as far as my knowledge yes. serves me correctly, yes. and as, as, as far as my intelligence goes, which might be limited in such matters a, concerning the Nyanza region, yes. I am not aware of any other kingpin yes. except Raila Amola Odinga. That's a, Similarly, yes. same knowledge, That's a, same standards, That's a, Ceteris Paribas, That's a, equally I'll, I'll for, the, for can I, can I, can I ask the same the question to Can I ask the same question to Sino? Then? Yes, please, but, well, please, well, even two. I mean, that, that's it. Sino, so in, in the event that we're talking about kingpin politics, why would a kingpin be questioned on his position? Why would you defend the position of kingpin? I mean, it goes without questioning, isn't it? Uh, it goes without questioning, uh, mm -hmm. just like... Uh, David was never questioned uh, as the king of uh, Israel, but uh, there are qualities that uh, are to be expected of somebody to be called a, a kingpin. Yes. And uh, we don't see such qualities uh, in somebody like uh, Rigadi Kashagwa, neither do the Kikuyu community. Uh, because uh, there's uh, some kind of uh, charisma uh, that is uh, expected of such a such, such a person, Does it? and uh, it's not actually a must at uh, any given time that a community must have a kingpin. Yeah, that's why uh, my, I was actually asking my, my friend, who is the kingpin of the Luya community? Uh, the kingpin of the Luya community has been since uh, Wamalwa, uh, 
uh, Michael Omalo has been Raila Omalo, Omalo Odinga. Uh, yet Raila Omalo Odinga is not a lawyer. Uh, the kingpin of the Kisi has actually been uh, Raila Odinga, the, the Kisi community. So it's actually not um, such a bad thing for the Kikuyu community not to have a, a kingpin at this time. Because uh, let's say the king has not yet been born and it can remain so for 50 years or even 20 years because they will not just throw their weight on anyone who comes along, uh, any leader. Because there are so many leaders and picking a, a kingpin should not even be, should not be a task. So actually this is something that I, should, I, I think uh, it definitely just comes from, uh, from the heavens. So that's why I'm saying that the kingpin of the Mount Kenya region at the moment has been William Ruto. So, so are you saying kingpins come from, from heaven? Here's the thing, gentlemen. If we were yes. to follow the same mm -hmm. debate, we can say that the king of this country subsequently is the president William Ruto, given to us from heaven. Is that the, the correct narrative? As a punishment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to leave it that. I'm going to leave it that. Guess what? At this particular point, gentlemen, I want us to move into an issue that has um, essentially seen Kenyans on the back end of what we we'll say, disrupted services at public hospitals is an issue that we have to keep on winning on a daily basis up to where we are right now. Officially, today, Mr. Mungai, it enters the second month that um, the medics across the country have been on strike. There are also threats that morticians are now going to join in. Oh, morticians. Um, yes, That's on this. Oh on this particular strike. So here's, here's where we are. And um, as we start today, Camp PDU has announced a peaceful um, procession from 9 a.m. today. Request for police security. IG Kome had ordered police firmly deal with striking doctors. And I started like this yesterday. IG Kome said they're now becoming a public nuisance on the basis of they are blowing um, whistles they are singing Vuvuzela. loudly and vuvuzelas. So on that basis, they should be dealt with firmly. Let's start with that. Do you find that statement a bit out of order itself? I, I think there is need for level-headedness yes. when it comes to dealing with the doctor strike because yes. the, the truth and the reality is one life lost courtesy of the doctor strike is okay. one too many lives lost. Yes. There is, there, is, there is importance of some level of fair playing ground. The IG needs to be level-headed. And I say this because, you know, when you're the IG and you head a police wing where sometimes even your own helicopters uh, suffer mishaps, and you know if you suffered mishap, your first point of call would be a doctor. It's always important to tread carefully when you live in a glass house, you know, you, you need to be very careful that you do not throw stones. Yes, and I've said that on this set again and again. Th there's, there's need for soberness because it's government that signed the CBA, even though they, they have come out to say it was under duress. I, 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 there is, governments exist in perpetuity. I believe that for the sake of the Kenyan people, the doctors and the government need to come into an agreement and an agreement that will alleviate the, the conditions that doctors suffer from pocket-wise and economically. And at the same time, the doctors need to present goodwill to the public. You know, Simba, I've been telling myself, if, say, doctors, having taken the, the oath, I don't know, the, it's, it's called a hippo's oath Hippo or something, yeah. hippocrates yeah. oath, yes. Having taken that oath, if, if in my opinion I was advising the doctors, maybe they would strike during the day and go back to work during the night. And then when government would see that people are flocking into hospitals during the night, maybe they would realize the importance that our doctors play. So that even the doctors try to balance. Because who, the person suffering now is not the person going to high-end private hospitals. <coughs> It is the common man who goes to level two, yes, level three, level four. Those are the people that are suffering as we speak. And given the fact that the clinicians themselves have joined the strike, and you know most of those level twos, threes, and four, five, they are led actually by clinicians, not even doctors. You have one doctor for I think how many clinicians. Typically the people in the village, they, they go and find them in a lab coat and call them doctari. They are clinical officers and having joined the strike, then it, 
there is need for soberness. That, that's how I would put it. There is need for soberness. Yes. There is need for the IG and uh, Professor Kindiki to also exercise some level of soberness also. It's not every, just because you can see a nail, it's not every problem that warrants hammering, so long as you see a nail. You know, some, sometimes we could use glue to hold pieces together. As a, pretty much I'll be coming back to you on that because the government has made themselves clear on what they need to see from the doctors before they go back to the negotiation table. So now, IG Kome statements that the, they need to be dealt with firmly now. And, and we saw that in Eldoret yesterday when a members of the public almost had a tea with the doctors who were on the streets um, that were demonstrating peacefully. And here, you can see what the, um, uh, the SG is saying, is saying that they will be out on the streets from 9 a.m. today and they're requesting police for security. Uh, that, I, that particular statement for IG Kome, how, how do you, would you like, kindly put it into perspective for us? Actually, when I heard that statement from uh, the Inspector General of, of, poli of Police, uh, yes. Mr. Kome, I was actually afraid and it, uh, it reminded me of uh, the previous uh, series of mandamanos that we had and that uh, same language that was uh, being bestowed on the protesters is actually the same language that uh, is being uh, used on the doctors and uh, this is actually a reflection that the government uh, uh, has failed uh, yes. to engage the doctors, the, the professionals uh, in the boardroom and so they have uh, decided to meet in the streets but uh, doctors uh, need not uh, go uh, to the streets after downing the tools they can as, as well stay at home and uh, then, then let's see where 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 Ijikoome is going to direct his his tear gases too. Yeah, the doctors do not need after downing the tools can just stay home. Actually, the idea is to of the of uh, that uh, uh, form of an industrial action is to down the tools. But I will not. Uh, that's not something that I would uh, uh, proudly encourage uh, the doctors to do, or even the government. So we are all co calling for sobriety between the two parties. Yes. Because right now, uh, actually, I actually spend uh, more hours in the house uh, these days because I'm afraid of going outside. Because you know, uh, there are a thousand ways to die outside there. So I could actually encounter some life-threatening uh, experience. Then. Uh, and the doctors are not uh, in the hospitals and I, I don't have a personal doctor and if I had a personal doctor I would still not be able to afford uh, those uh, equipments that uh, the doctor might need. So it's actually a very, very sad situation but uh, uh, the government, uh, the government actually, on, in my opinion, the government, uh, or let me say Mr. Ruto, Mr. Mr. Ruto, Mr. Ruto is very, very, very wrong because uh, uh, according to the CBA, if, you, if, if we had an agreement that we are going to pay you the interns 206,000 per month, then all of a sudden uh, the president comes and reduces that amount to 70,000. First of all, that's a breach of contract. And uh, the, pres the president, uh, and by extension the Ministry of Education and all the relevant uh, bodies in the government side should actually be having a day in court because yes. that's a breach of contract and that's it's not it's not fair it's not fair and that, that's quite a quite a, a very a very 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 huge percentage of a reduction there so i blame the government on this matter it's what it is mr Wangai. now the government has really um been firm on this particular issue for the doctors but they're, they're quite firm on one area on the payment of interns they've said there is no money we're going to start with seventy thousand as the highest amount of money that we're going to fork out to the interns who are going out for medical practice in these institutions. And then later on, we can work on a plan on onboarding majority of them into the healthcare sector. That's, that's the best way the government sees out of this. And so they've said for the other areas in that CBA that you guys signed in 2017, the only way we're going to negotiate is once you come off the streets. So get off the streets, we're here for the negotiating table. Is that, is that the best approach to this particular issue, Mr. Ongai? There's an, there's an existing court order yes. asking doctors to go back to work. No, so, so to speak legally, the doctors are in contravention of the law. 
so to speak legally okay but having said that i i I, re I reiterate that it's important for there to be a sober discussion yes <clears throat> because what my my intern friends tell me is that the the money is actually being reduced they have been the the amount they are deemed to be asking for is what they have been receiving so government intends to revise the same downwards mm -hmm. that is what i am i am hearing but i also hear the president saying we need to live within our means you know last time we discussed here i told you on the first charge of the consolidated fund where when we collect taxes that's where we put our money Yes. Part of the first charge is debts, external, internal, and part of it is pensions. And for, I think, the last three months, we've not been able to put something towards pensions. It tells you that we, we are living hand to mouth as a country. And therefore, it's important then that we all, as a country, find a way to live within our means. Yes without making it look like one profession is running away with all the money and other professionals are suffering. Yes, sir. Pretty much. Uh, so now, on that particular one, should they come off the street before the rest of the negotiations are set forward? Well, uh, it will be good uh, for, the, for the population if they came out of the streets and uh, went back uh, to their workstations. But uh, in reality, uh, w uh, the question is, uh, will we actually be solving the problem? Because uh, this is something that could also again recur next month or six months later. So th that's actually not the question. The question uh, is, how can they, how can the government uh, OK, you see, let's be fair. Uh, let's, the president is say, uh, encouraging the doctors to, that we should yes. uh, live within our means. But, and, uh, and so they went ahead and uh, cut their, slashed their, their, their stipends by a very, very huge percentage. But one should actually wonder and ask, uh, and, uh, and ask this question, yeah? Is the president being uh, honest? Isn't he being disingenuous? Because why, why only target the doctors? And such a critical, uh, such a critical sector. Why, only, why not the members of parliament? Why not his office? Actually, the, the state house uses one billion every day. One billion every day. But the doctors are only asking for 1.2 billion before they resume work. Because uh, in totality, they are actually asking for four, a total of 4 point something billion. But uh, uh, with 1.2 billion, as they said, they can resume work as the negotiations continue. So what is... Uh, 1.2 billion to this government, yeah? So the president uh, has, not been, has not been fair. And it's never been fair anyway. On that then, let's close that particular discussion. There's an issue here that we have to talk about uh, quickly, uh, that, and Sheila, if you can then take us back to the um, mentioned this morning. It, it's, it's an area that we have to pick your quick sentiments on it before we walk out of the studio this morning. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about one man, a totally. Francis. Mm, the man under CAK. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 yeah, under that's CAK. A, that we got to mention in this morning. Two things, uh, Mr. Mungai. Yes. One, the gentleman want to come up with a bill that is going to introduce term limits to his prestigious job that is held for as long as any other person on this set can remember. Mm. One, as the court secretary general. Number two as well, he's been told, we, we, we don't understand you. If you looked at this man in 2023 in the build up to the general elections, mm -hmm. you would actually in 2022, sorry, you would know exactly where it was. It was with one Raila Molodinga and the Zimio coalition. Once the results started tricking in and things turned the other way around, it was among the first people to turn around. Well, quick fast into 2023, towards the end of it, Francis Atoli was also caught speaking heavily against this particular government in terms mm. of the way they're running things, in terms of taxation, the cost of living, and just the general honesty to the way that they are treating the employees of this particular country. Mm. So it's been told, from one side, you declare your stand and stick with it. Number two, ah, you gotta go home. You kinda have a term limit that doesn't end. Is he under siege? I, <laughs> I must I must admire the man at all because he's he's been in court to perhaps longer than how many years? 
as long as I can remember. Longer than maybe I was born. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I think a good dancer knows when to leave the stage. As, as my colleague said, mm -hmm. you, you need to know when it is time to exit. Does it? I think at Wally the man now is a gun without bullets. You pull the trigger and the end result are blanks. He's done his time. He, he, nothing that he says now, you remember, he prophesied that Ruto will never be president. <coughs> he went on TV shows. <laughs> he almost uh, wiped the entire floor with the fact that Ruto will never be the president. <laughs> to Ruto might be the president. To I will work with Ruto because international organization say that I should support the president. I think his, his time is done. It's time for him to bow honorably and exit the, the central organization of trade union stage. When you have your children, like Fazul now coming up with legislation to ostensibly kick you out, I mean, I, 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 you need to know when to leave. And I think it is time for a tool, so to speak, yes. to leave. Otherwise, when you wait for a law to chase you away, I think this is the re reincarnation of Mugabe. What Mugabe was to Zimbabwe is what Atwal is to Kotu. So now, is he under is he under siege? Well, uh, <laughs> he should be <laughs> under siege. Uh -huh. And uh, actually, uh, Tomboya right now must actually be turned in, in his grave because, mm -hmm. uh, as I understand, uh, it's actually Tomboya that uh, built that. Uh, that house uh, in Gikomba that uh, Atwoli sits in. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Tomboya being uh, quite a, a remarkable trade unionist will not uh, have sat in uh, such a position for, all, for, for, for so long. Yeah? And uh, it's the likes of uh, Atwolis that, that actually play the role of uh, gatekeepers. And uh, as I, I said before, time is up for gatekeepers. Uh, somebody like me and somebody like Mungai also needs to have an office in Geneva and be traveling <laughs> there once in a while, every now and then, yeah? And uh, actually have a, a feeling of how uh, clothes from Geneva uh, feel like. Does it? Yeah, so <laughs> at all issue, uh, but, uh, but um, be honestly careful speaking. not to be called Shenzi, son. <laughs> <laughs> He would say, Shenzi, what is he saying? <laughs> uh, but then again, I uh, understand that it's not all about, uh, uh, it's not all about Atwoli, because uh, actually when uh, the way laws are made, uh, yeah. we actually make laws uh, out of problems. Does so it? we actually identify a problem uh, somewhere, then eventually we just create laws uh, to cushion us, uh, the next generation from uh, such problematic uh, characters like uh, the go to Secretary General uh, Francis Atwoli. Yeah. Here's the thing, he's, he's a man of many colors. Uh, somebody told me, he said, you, you know, call Kalonzo chameleon, but you should <laughs> listen to one. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> <laughs> should I take this opportunity to apologize? Yes, you should. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do I have reasons to <laughs> believe he's not? <laughs> <laughs> somebody told me, like, I'm telling you, I tell you, mm. there is no way one President William Ruto will become. I'm telling you. And then comes in and says, you know, I want to work with you. And then a couple of months no, later. No, he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> then he, he stands up and he just says, no. Take this to the bank. <laughs> now we realize he was talking about Chase Bank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. He was talking about that. Chase Bank. That's, <laughs> That's the bank he was telling us to take. <laughs> Whether that law to actually get him out of uh, office or introduce some limits to that particular position. Hold on. How, how, how could we figure that out? You know? It was, it was time, isn't it? Anyway, uh, Mr. Vungai, Sino, thank you very much for joining us this morning on the Morning Drift. Take them back online to the time that they joined us right here at Lookup TV across all your social media platforms, weighing in on a couple of issues that are critical to the country right now. Hopefully, 
we do pray that the medic strike is going to be solved soon rather than later and also issues around the rainfall that is currently pounding many parts of the country like we always end be safe don't test whether the water is deep by jumping in it that's it goodbye see you tomorrow for another edition